Can we get those, uh, Notice to the public, if you wish to address the council, individuals addressing the council should be respectful of others in their choice of words and actions. Owners of properties being considered this evening will be allowed to address the council at the time the condemnation hearing is called. When, when the address is called, please come to the podium and state your name and address. The PowerPoint presentation given by administration, which contains the background and history of each property, photographs of the subject structures, and administrative administration's recommendations has been made a part of the official record of these proceedings, a hard copy of which is to be maintained in the Office of the Planning Department. All cell phones and electronic devices used for communication should be silenced for the duration of the meeting. I'd like to call this special meeting of condemnations to order, and we'll have the invocation and pledge of allegiance by Mr. Steve Trosclair. You have to press the speak, please. Loving and gracious God, help us keep the common good before us. Strengthen our gifts of wisdom, courage, and respect for the views of others. Strengthen us to continue to work with our leaders, seeking an ever more just society that acts in harmony and independence with all creation. In the name of Jesus, in union with your spirit, amen. 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 Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we get started, I would just like to have a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, as you can see, we are now back in our council chambers and we are working with a new system today. Uh, this is actually our first time having a meeting with this new AV equipment. Um, and I just want everybody to have a little patience because we're all learning it. And so there will be some mistakes, um, but it will be a much better system as far as audio and visual. So thank you very much. Um, Item one, conduct public hearings and take action on the proposed condemnation of structures located at the following. A, 1125 Roussel Street, owned by McKinley Crawford Jr., David Crawford, and Joseph Crawford, uh, care of Millie Verdan. Is there anyone here for that? Yes, sir, you can come up to the podium. Ms. Dion. You have to request to speak. <laughs> All right. Okay. It's ready. Okay. Yes. So this property um, was continued from the July 11th, 2022 hearing. At that time, we um, allowed the owner additional time to um, get some documentation and to obtain a permit. Um, and to bring the property into compliance by the uh, January meeting, however, that was postponed. So, but we inspected that on uh, the 27th of this month, and um, there are some improvements. We can see that being made to the structure. So we're gonna, and the renovation permit that was obtained expires uh, this July. So we're gonna recommend that this matter is continued until the hearing scheduled for the July uh, 2023 meeting. Okay. Yes, sir. State your name um, and address, sir. David Crawford, 4850 Melville, Georgia, 30039. Uh, yes, sir. And do you have any comments about the property? Um, we have been doing work on it. Um, each unit has been cleared out. Uh, the structure has been secured. We ordered windows. A lot of the product is on backlog, as well as, like, uh, we need... Uh, the service panels for electric. Um, those have been taking a very long time to come in. Um, and I may be asking for another extension in July, but we are actively um, making progress to get it back up to being a rentable, rentable property for four units. Thank you very much. So my, my request would be if I could get an extension past July, because um, I'm traveling back and forth from Georgia to get the, the location taken care of. Okay. So. Mr. Tillman? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, <clears throat> question for planning, Ms. Dion. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Ms. Dion, what, what would be your recommendation as he relates to uh, getting additional time beyond July? Because uh, I'm looking at it, and I noticed this been on here for quite some time. Uh, love to see property get back into commerce. There's no doubt about that because our housing stock is very, very low. 
Uh, but give me your thoughts on that, and I'm going to follow your direction. I would still at this time recommend that we keep it until the July's meeting. That's like four or five months from now. It's a lot of time. Don't know when all the materials will actually come in, but I'd like to keep it there so that we can go back out and take a look at what may have been done or may not have been done. And um, and if he's needing additional time from there, I think we could suggest it at that time. Okay. And uh, Mr. Crawford, certainly uh, I, I, I understand as, as it relates to getting various equipment and things of that end, as it relates to, um, since, the, since the hurricane anyway, I mean, I myself been having struggles doing that. But we're going to uh, go ahead on and follow the recommendation of uh, planning at this point here. Uh, that's July. That's some significant time for you guys to make some uh, more adjustments to the, to the prop improvements to the property. And uh, we'll revisit this matter again at that time. I, I'd also like to add, though, that you know, if he runs into any issues, please communicate with us. I haven't had any communication with him since the last hearing. So they need to contact us and let us know what's going on, what, what are your delays and things like that. So other than that, I don't know until I get here. And that's why you know the current recommendations are being made. But also, I'd, I'd like to ask that he makes certain that the, the property, the exterior property is maintained, the grass is cut and things like that. Make sure that's kept up also. So Mr. Crawford, why have you guys been communicating with the department? I wasn't informed that I need to communicate. I was informed that I will be asked to come back to report progress. I gave my email address, phone number, address, all the updated information at this last hearing, but I was never informed that I had to follow up with you guys. I have been following up with the, the permitting office. Uh, they have come out to do an initial inspection for the electrical. Um, right now we did the base electrical, uh, electrical, we did the structure, we did the roofing. I just wasn't aware that I was supposed to report you guys on the status because I would have done that if I didn't have to come from Georgia well, here it, for one day at Well, it's, all, it's always good if you can communicate, even in Georgia, just give them a phone call. Mm -hmm. Who can I communicate with? Who can I call? And how would I reference it? I'll give it. And she'll get with you and give you, give you the necessary information you need. So, uh, like I said, we're looking forward to the to the property getting back in commerce, we need it. Housing stock is low, so we need it. So I'm asking that you guys certainly communicate and let us know what's going on. And we want to work with you guys on this, okay? Okay. All right, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Mr. Steve Trostler? Yeah, I just want Mr. Crawford, do you have any anticipated completion date? I don't. Uh, unfortunately, with COVID, products are just not available. It's, it's been a struggle. I've been trucking products from Georgia, Lowe's, to here. When the Lowe's here in home I want to support doesn't have products. So it's been a journey for me. Okay. I just thought maybe you might have had a completion date that you were anticipating. I, I really can't project anything because it's, it's when things become available. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Michel. Uh, thank you. And, and in all likelihood, as long as you're progressing every three months, we'll, you know, we'll give you the time that you need in all likelihood. Two people you need to stay in contact with. One is your councilman, which today is Mr. Tillman, but uh, come July, it'll be someone else. So uh, Ms. Dion will be able to tell you who that is and maybe give you contact information for that person. And of course, the second person is Ms. Dion. And if you, con if you are in touch with those people, they will tell you whether or not you really need to be here or whether we can put it over uh, for three more months without you having to come. So, I appreciate that. Thank okay, you. Okay, so good luck Thank with you. that and good luck with, uh, with getting the property back the way you want it to be. All right. And Councilman Tillman, correct? Oh, okay. Do we have a motion and a second? Okay. Yes. All right. So we have a motion and a second to extend this until July. Uh, members, vote your machine. Clerk, have we had all votes cast? Uh, I'd like to restart it one time, please. Okay. Members vote your machine. Clerk, have all the votes been cast? Yes, ma'am. In vote. <coughs> Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item B. 1303 Baratary Avenue, owned by Redmond Enterprises, LLC. Is anybody here for this property? All right, Miss Dion. Okay. 
Yes, uh, this matter was continued from our October uh, 24th meeting. And since that meeting, uh, the structure has been demolished. So we're going to ask that the file is closed. Mr. Carl Harding. Uh, so move the, uh, the file, uh, the advice of um, uh, administration. All right. So we have a motion by Mr. Carl and a second by Mr. Steve Trosclair. Members, vote your machine. Clerk, have all the votes been cast? Yes, ma'am. Motion passes. Item C. 8051 Park Avenue, owned by the Nabut Brothers, LLC. Mr. Chris Pulaski. Okay, there we go. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So um, this meeting or this item was continued from the October meeting. Since that time, uh, we've been in contact uh, numerous times with the property owner. Uh, we continue to have issues with uh, securing the property. Uh, they have contacted HPD, Home Up Police Department, and have uh, essentially uh, agreed to allow them to be able to uh, cite trespassers um, no matter uh, uh, what time, day or night. Uh, the uh, owner has applied for a uh, permit. Uh, we are uh, issuing it as a demolition permit to clear, uh, clean and gut the rooms. They have made a few improvements to the facade, including painting and, and some door replacements, but there's still more that needs to be done. At this time, we also have a, uh, an architect, structural engineer, and our chief building official uh, finishing up an assessment report of that property. Uh, we also are in the process of getting an appraisal for the property. So at this time, we'd like to uh, recommend that we continue this item to the April 24th, 2023 meeting. Thank you. Mr. Michel. Is it still the same owners? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, all right. Was... There have there have been, uh, we've received a couple of, of contacts from prospective buyers, but right now it's the same property owner. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And this is actually in the district that I represent, and I've been working really closely with you, Chris, and uh, as well with HPD and Ms. Dion. And so, um, I, you know, I accept that we're going to go ahead and continue this, um, you know, on the basis that, you know, we have a good plan for this property. So thank you. Sure. Yeah. Second. I can't second my own motion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So can I have a second? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Okay. All right. <laughs> so we have a second. Members, vote your machine. <laughs> Clerk, have all the votes been cast? All right. Motion passes. Item D, 221 Prince Collins Street, owned by Joan Linnell Stewart. Is Miss Joan Linnell here or someone representing this property? Good evening. Good evening. Please state your name and address, ma'am. My name is Joan Stewart Hartfield. It's 223 Lake Crescent Circle in Homa, Louisiana, 70360. Yes, ma'am. And I'm here representing 221. Um, as you can see, we started uh, construction on it. We've able to, we had to restructure the limestone and the blocks. We made sure everything was sturdy on that part. We did the whole roof. We still need to put the shingles on the top. We've replaced the windows. And again, I'm sorry, we still trying to locate some side and some supplies as well but we are working on it. Uh, the contractor that I have, it's not a large contracting company. It's a number of two to three guys that's working on the house. Okay. So they doing their best, but unfortunately my little contractor got struck with the flu and COVID. So that held us up for a little while, you know, along with the weather. But like I told him, I appreciate you putting the windows, doing the roof and everything, but you have to clean up as well as you go. You can't just leave everything you're taking off the house all over the yard. It makes it look a mess. Yeah. So 
I'm trying to get him to pick up, but like he stated, he's trying to get as much off as he possibly could to make one load because the first load is free, but each additional load after that would cost me $250. So he's trying to help me at the same time. Ms. Ms. Dion, do you have a report? Yes, we, we're actually going to recommend that this uh, location is continued also until the July 24th meeting because she has her um, her permit and it doesn't expire until that time. And so we would like to allow her for at least that additional time. Okay. Mr. Harding. Uh, I would move to, uh, to follow that uh, recommendation by uh, administration. Right. So we have a motion by Mr. Uh, Harding and a second by Mr. Trosclair. Uh, members, vote your machine. Clerk, have all the votes been cast? Motion passes. Thank you. You have until July. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Item E, 5192 Shrimpers Row, owned by Sherry A. Alston and Brandy Michelle Berg. Ms. Dion. Yes. Uh, so since we requested the hearing for this location, the owner has since applied for assistance via the FEMA demo program. So we're going to recommend that the file is closed until, you know, uh, she works through that program for eligibility. Mr. Trosclair. Okay, so she's not even noticed she's going to be qualified for it. Correct, right? correct, not yet. Okay, thank you. Mr. Babin. How, how long does the, the FEMA process take? Do you have any idea? I have. I mean, because we're having a look at this. Uh, yeah, we're looking at a lot based no, no, on and, FEMA, and I but no. That. <laughs> no, I have no idea how long the FEMA program. I, I don't know. I really can't I mean, answer that. Can, can we really justify leaving? Uh, I mean, she wants to tear down program, okay? Do we know if this one has been, because some of them have been rejected already on, on the, the tear down program. She applied February 5th. Oh, That's where we see A lot of people applied. applied last year. Oh, well, yeah, towards the end of last year on this. Mm -hmm. All right, I, I'll go along. I'll make the motion to, to concur with administration, but, but something like this is just, a, a total eyesore, and, and I understand that that she wants to uh, to try to get it done for nothing. But what's going to happen is, is this is going to sit like this for, and we got another hurricane season, we got another hurricane season coming. So it, it's kind of dangerous. But if that's your recommendation, I'll go along with that. Second. All right. So we have a motion and a second. We have a few more comments, though, um, Mr. Michel. Yeah. Um, this was damaged as a result of Hurricane Ida, and not before. Correct. Thank you. Mr. Pulaski? Yeah, the uh, we had a meeting last Friday uh, with the folks associated with the PPDR, the FEMA Demolition Program. And while we do have a number of properties uh, that were approved for demolition, we have a much greater number of properties that were denied or deemed conditionally ineligible. And at this time, the big question that we had and that we were stressing with our consultants and I use stressing lightly that they need to get us that information as to why uh, FEMA deemed them conditionally ineligible because you know there may be instances where we can get these taken care of that it's much better to get them through that FEMA demo program it'll be much faster and, and it'd be at no cost oftentimes with these demolitions if you're especially if you're talking about low to moderate income families I mean at the end of the day who gets stuck with the bill they do. Um, so if we can get these processed through the FEMA program, so much the better. Thank you. Mr. Charles Claire, do you have another comment? I was going to I was gonna kind of bring up what Chris just spoke to. I've, I've been speaking with Clay about several structures in my district that, uh, in fact, all of them in my district mm -hmm. were denied. So mm -hmm. we're not getting a good uh, track record with FEMA as far as getting these things demoed. So, uh, you know, I didn't get a single one in my, I think, well, I'm sorry, I got one in my whole district had applied, they got accepted, everybody else got rejected. So, and that seems to be the norm throughout the parish. So I wouldn't expect too much out of it. Thank you. Mr. Harding. Uh, yes, and with that being said, um, could you please give the number for the demo just in case uh, everyone else that wanted, that haven't had the number? Could you uh, put that over there? Uh, you come back to me? Yeah, we'll come back because yeah, I we'll have another back. comment. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Mr. Babin. Yeah, Chris, and, and you alluded to it at this thing. 
everyone that I've seen before, which was the greater majority of them were rejected, FEMA gave no explanation of why they rejected it. So we, you know, that puts Dion's department in, in a bad position because here you want to go out and get it done for the parish, but we don't even understand if FEMA's going to say, well, they just didn't cross this T or they didn't dot that I. It, it's a terrible system that, that we're having to work under because Shrimpers Row is in, in dire need of getting rid of a lot of this stuff, and, and I can see you shaking your head yes. So <laughs> if, if we can get some explanations from FEMA, it speeds up our process is what I'm trying to say. Like Steve said, one out of all of them in Montague, which was hit tremendously hard, was approved. So that's it. Thank you. All right. Mr. Pulaski. Yep, thank you. The number I'm going to give is the number to the Solid Waste Department. Um, it's 985-873-6739, and they can get their information and get it to the uh, appropriate people. So that's 985-873-6739. Mr. Dirk Gidry. Chris, out of all these that y'all y'all that they approved, have any ever been torn down yet? Uh, no, but we have had, uh, I think, 20 demolition permits that were issued on July, uh, January 18th. So the contractors have been given the permits to go ahead and do it. Uh, but to my knowledge, they haven't actually torn any down yet. All right. Yeah, because i got a bunch of them need to go too. So thank you. So those permits are good for 60 days. So we have a motion by Mr. Bavin and a second by Mr. Michel. Uh, members, vote your machine. Clerk, have all the votes been cast? Motion passes. Item F, 3954 B Greatwood Street, owned by Brandon E. Brown, care of Nikki Brown. <coughs> Ms. Dion? Yes, okay, so the initial complaint for this location was received in August of 2021. We conducted inspections, we've issued notices, um, our last inspection on the 23rd of February indicated that it continues to be in violation. So we, we're going to recommend that this structure is condemned. Do we have anybody here representing this property? Mr. Tanner? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, there, we <clears throat> there we go. Thank you. I'm sorry. I apologize. I just had knee surgery. But um, this one was properly advertised for, and we, not, we did not receive any response. We need a motion and a second. <laughs> yes, I'm going to follow the recommendation of uh, Lytle. Yes, I'm going to follow the recommendation of administration uh, with the conditions. So everyone on your, on your end and Mr. T uh, McGee's uh, end, they actually try to make the contact because I didn't have any contact either. So uh, I'm going to actually follow the recommendation by... Uh, from the administration. All right, so we have a motion by Mr. Harding and a second by Mr. Amity. Um, <clears throat> members, vote your machine. <clears throat> Clerk, have all the votes been cast? Motion passes. Item G, 608, 608 Linda Ann Avenue, owned by Marie Washington. Ms. Dion? Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Okay, so yes, so since the request of this hearing, we have confirmed occupancy at this location. Uh, we've also confirmed that utilities are connected, and so we're going to recommend that this file is closed. Okay. Ma'am, can you state your name? If um, you give me one minute. All right, state your name and um, your address, please. Ataba Washington, 608 Linda Ann, Gray, Louisiana. Uh, Marie Washington is deceased. But is there anything else? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, can I? Yes, ma'am. Okay. If so, on on the last inspection, we inspected it. Uh, I think Thursday or Friday of last week. Well, there was someone in the structure, um, and spoke to one of my inspectors. <gasps> that person also advised that they would be at the meeting. She would not come out of the structure. She only spoke through the window. Um, so that's when we um, contacted the utility companies stating that utilities are still um, connected. So we're not certain then who is living in the structure. Um, I, I, 
had just gotten out of the shower when the <laughs> oh you were with you yes I had just gotten out of the shower <laughs> so I I heard somebody and I did come uh, I was explaining to her that if uh, in one picture I'm sure that she took uh, you should be able to see a pallet of shingles out there um, I have am in contact with Restore they have I'm just switching solutions uh, basically so they have awarded me uh, I believe 118 to complete the repairs. I've had uh, both inspections and ground soil tests, all of that stuff. So I'm just pretty much waiting for the solution. Okay, wonderful. Do we have a motion and a second? All right, we have a motion by, oh yes, Mr. Pulaski. Thank you. Um, Ma'am, If that's Restore LA? Yes. If you could provide any information, updates, or, or any sort of case number or anything to the Nuisance Abatement Division, that would be most helpful. Sure. Uh, do you need it right this now or send it in? Or you could give it to. Yeah, if you've got it. You got it. Uh, yes, I can pull it up. Hold on. One second. I'm sorry. Uh, the applicant number, is that what you're looking for? Sure. Uh, 210347. Okay. And just for your knowledge, I mean, even through the Restore LA program, um, you will need a, a permit for those yes, renovations. Yes, I know. I so, understand that. Yeah. Okay. I had actually obtained a permit before, but the contractor that I hired had a heart attack, so I wasn't able to go through with the repairs at that time. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, members, vote your machine. Clerk, have all the bo votes been cast? <coughs> motion passes. Item H. 123 Banks Avenue, owned by John W. the Third and Evelyn Henry. Ms. Dion. Yes, so the initial complaint was received November of 2020. We inspected the location. We've issued notices. Um, the last inspection was February 23rd, and it continues to be in violation. So we're going to recommend that uh, the structure is condemned. I'm sorry. Mr. Tillman. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Dion, so we've had no response from anybody as it relates to this property? No, we have not in Tanneries. Yeah, Mr. McGee? Yes, we were used to pu do public advertising. We did public advertising, got no response from anybody. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Follow the recommendation of um, <laughs> planning. So we have a motion by Mr. Tillman and a second by Mr. Amity. Uh, members, please vote your machines. Clerk, have all the votes been cast? One member is in the hallway, so he will abstain. Yes. Motion passes. Item I, 1226 Division Avenue, owned by Shirley Jackson. Ms. Dion. Okay, so the initial complaint was, was received in October of 2020. We've issued notice, um, conducted inspections. The last inspection was February 23rd, continues to be in violation, and so we're going to recommend that uh, the structure is condemned. Do we have anybody representing this property? Mr. McGee? Yes, we were the ad hoc on this. We properly advertised, did research. Nobody reached out to us. Okay, Mr. Tillman. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, it's it's kind of difficult. I, I like I said earlier, I would love to see properties go back into commerce, but if no one don't contact us, don't come before the council to even talk to us about it to show us whether or not they're interested in get some assistance with it, I don't know what else to do other than to follow the recommendation of uh, planning. <coughs> So we have a motion by Mr. Tillman and a second by Mr. Babin. Uh, members, vote your machine. Clerk, have all the votes been cast? Motion passes. 
Item J, 316 McKinley Street, owned by Joan Daigle. Ms. Dion. Yes, so we received the complaint for this location March of 2022, conducted inspections, issued notices. The last inspection was February 23rd. It continues to be in violation, so we're going to recommend that it is condemned. Do we have somebody representing this property? Yes, sir. <coughs> Call Jay Hutchison. I own the two properties next to the house, 322 and 320 McKinley. It's been an eyesore for several years. Two trees have recently fell on the front of the house. I'm waiting for the third tree to possibly fall on my house. I have a five-year-old grandbaby in that front room. I worry about that all the time. I have a problem with rats, snakes, mice, and people. I finally had HPD get all the drug heads out of there. Most of them have been arrested. I've had child services involved with them. Quite a few other. Uh, I want to see the house tore down. And I also approached Ms. Joan about buying the property, and she turned me down. So here where we are. Well, thank you very much. And this is actually in the district I represent, and so I'm going yep. to support your decision. Mm -hmm. So thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, we have Mr. Gidry and then uh, Mr. Darren Gidry and then you. Um, Mr. Darren Gidry. Uh, yes. It, if, we, if we condemn the structure and there is a tree that's on the property that's about to fall. Do There's they? actually two trees that's sitting on the house. But they'll have to they'll have to remove the trees in the right. house because you and can't the remove other the house. Tree, but. The other tree is on the side, which is leaning, which is rotten. So it's going to fall any time. Whether it's going to fall on my house or the power lines, I have no idea. How does that work if we condemn maybe Mr. Well, Hager? Well, supposedly you can, Team we, Rubicon we, looked at the house and it's been condemned already. Do we, uh, <coughs> do, do we take down the tree as well? Ms. Dion, do you have an answer to that question? Okay, I'm sorry. Well, unless Ms. Dion, do you I'm know sorry. the answer? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, if I believe that if the the tree that he's speaking of that is currently leaning but not yet falling, however, if it is an obstruction to the contractor going in to tear down the structure, I would uh, believe that he would remove, uh, they would remove that tree also. But if the tree is, if, if there's nothing that's uh, obstructing the contractor or if the tree has not yet fallen and nothing will make it fall at this time, then we won't remove it. But if, if the contractor feels there's a safety issue, he could remove that. Correct. Of course, the cost of removing that tree would also be attached to the property. Well, if you look at the picture that's on the right-hand bottom, it's actually one stump with three branches off, and two of them have already fell. And the other one, you can see how it's kind of leaning like this, and it's, it goes over the power line. So if something happens, I watch it shake every time the wind comes by and don't even park our vehicles there. Yes, sir. And we're going to uh, we're gonna get with our legal, uh, and then uh, we're going to take a vote on this one. Okay, sir? All right. Thank you. But right. also, Tanner actually represents the owner. Mr. Hutchinson is not the owner, so. Correct. That's correct, yes, and we did properly advertise for it and didn't get a response. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. A. Bear. <clears throat> I concur with uh, Dion that if the tree is integrated with the structure, uh, then the tree should be condemned with it because it's part of the property. If it would just be a bare tree sitting off to the property and a beautiful oak tree, then I would say no. But in this case, from what I'm seeing, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to dissect that structure without that tree. That tree looks rotten and should be condemnable. Again, there's, if the tree is rotten and dilapidated, it is part of the property, and therefore Dion saying it is, so the tree should be removed. Thank you, Mr. Abair. Mr. Carl Harding. Yes, I can agree. Um, basically, because I, before it, it was in uh, Ms. Domain's uh, district, it was in my district. And uh, I think also when we're dealing with the hypotheticals here, we just don't deal with the hypothetical. I can agree with that, but then I don't deal with so much of the hypothetical. Uh, so that's my point. Um, when we actually address these issues, we just address the issues on the fact and not on the hypothetical. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. Tillman. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, if, if my memory served me right, I think the gentleman mentioned that one of the trees had, a, had some utility wires. Uh, close to it. Uh, it's across the street from it. In other words, what, what that tree what, is. Yes. You have to go to the mic, sir. Where that tree is, it's leaning like this. So mm -hmm. it can either fall on my house or the power lines or across the street. The tree okay. is actually taller than the power lines and it's rotten. 
There's no greenery on the tree at all. Who, so it's it's going to come down. Who's your who, who's who's your service provider? Hmm? Who's your service provider? Service utility. For, uh city of Homer. City of Homer. Uh <clears throat> Give me Mr. Mr. Mike. I'm sorry. Let me let me hire the parish manager. Yes, Mr. Toops. Thank, you, I'm thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You can sit down. Okay. Mr. Right. Toops. <clears throat> Mr. Toops, can you have our guys to get with the department and have our guys to go out there and take a look at that tree? Because I wouldn't want to see that tree fall into that, onto the utility wire. So from a safety span standpoint for the residents in the area, have our guys just go over there and take a look and see what we're talking about. Yes, sir. It'll be done tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Abear, uh, you have Mr. Abear, you have to um, request to speak. You have to press it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't go through the tutorial. I wasn't invited. <laughs> it's on now, sir. Right. Um, I've advised the planning department to expedite this one. Good. They get quotes, not bids. So this looks like to be an, a possible emergency. Mm -hmm. So Councilman Tillman, I'm advising them to go. Get a fast quote, get somebody out Good. there to go look at Good. it. Thank take you. the tree down. They can take the tree down first and go right. through the house later. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Madam Chair. So can we get a motion? Okay. All right. So I have a motion by Mr. Amadi. Can I get a second? Second. And a second by Mr. Dirk Guidry. Uh, members, uh, vote your machine. Clerk, have all the votes been cast? Motion passes. Item K, 407 Angeron Street, owned by Austin Cannell. Ms. Dion. Okay. The initial complaint we received was in July of 2022. We issued notice, conducted inspections. Um, the last inspection was February 23rd. It continues to be in violation, so we're going to recommend it that it is condemned. Is there anybody here representing this property? Mr. McGee. Yes, we were the ad hoc on this. And again, properly advertised with no response. Okay. Thank you. So can we get a motion? Move. All right. We have a motion by Mr. Amity. And a second by Mr. Steve Trosclair. Members, vote your machines. Clerk, have all the votes been cast? Members vote, vote, can we start again? Okay, all right. Members vote your machine. Have all the votes been cast? Okay, motion passes. Just a point of clarity, um, members, I know we're still learning. It has to be lit up before we vote, so that's why she has to turn it on first. Item L, 207 Maplewood Drive, owned by Estate Robert L. Lee Dunn, and Rita Dunn, care of Robbie Dunn Burren. Ms. Dion. Yes, the initial complaint was received in August of 2020. We um, conducted inspections, issued notice. The last inspection was February 23rd. Continues to be in violation, so we're going to recommend that it is condemned. Is someone here for this property? Hi, can you please um, pull the mic down and state your name and address, please? Joni Dunn, 1943 Highway 182 in Race 1, Louisiana. Um, we're Robbie's sister. Okay. And parent, uh, our parents were Rita and Robert Dunn. Jody Dunn, 1943 Highway 182, Race 1. Okay, um, what would you like to see happen with this property? Um, We've been having a difficult time doing Can this. you come to the mic, sure. ma'am? Okay. We've been having a difficult time with um, our other sister doing the succession to have it taken care of. We wanted to have it demolished. And, but um, the other sister didn't show. So that's where we're at right now. Okay. Mr. Jules Abair. Yeah, my question was, were these people, these are these actually heirs and the owners of the property? Because I heard a mention about a brother. But if, if no succession has been done, technically it still transmits to unless absent a will. 
uh, to, to, to the heirs, and they recommend in condemnation. So if you can vote, take it to the next step. They want it taken down, and yeah. so. Well, one sister, they. Uh, Ma'am, come to the mic. Sorry. Okay. The sisters, Robbie has, she's a female. She's been paying the taxes. Well, we both have, actually. Um, but can't agree on the ownership of doing the succession. So that's the problem. Okay. Mr. Okay. Tillman. Yes, madam, madam Chair, I'm just looking at the expression on the young lady. She doesn't face. want to let it go. She uh, wants. Is, is your expression to speak or what? What? What, what you're expressing? Because we want you to go here. We don't. We don't want you to go she here with something on your mind and you don't say it. So you good? Okay. All right. It's, um, it's my parents' home. Okay. Um, I don't want to let it go. I recently gained employment to um do my part in saving the property. I don't want to let it go. Um, I can financially do what I need to do at this point to save mom and dad's property. Mr. Amity. All right. So right now you're saying you guys are still tied up in succession. So that's never been completed because here it shows that um, it just shows Robbie is the owner, but that hasn't been determined. Not the owner. Robbie is not the owner. Come, all right, get a little closer to the mic. Robbie is not the owner. All right, so what what would be your intentions? You said earlier you want to take it down. Take it down and put a home for her. She would be able to, to, clean, clean, to clean, the, the clean the property and, up. And she put a home. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be a burden on. Mr. Abear. Um, <laughs> as I understand it, if we demolition it, all it's going to do is send them the bill. That is correct. They, but they keep the property. They keep the property. All they got to do is pay the bill. They can't even agree on hiring a succession attorney doing a succession. Right. So my well, recommendation is condemn it, give them the bill. They can pay it. It'll be free and clear. And they can go rebuild what they want. Yeah. Because you're saying, you know, if you they get a succession it, done, right. You're saying you want to take it down. And so what's going to happen is, the bill is going to go to the estate of your parents. Um, once you do the succession, if the the members give, donate, or sell to your other sister, then she could put whatever she wants on the property. Okay. Um, we're just going to take the one step and, and take the structure out of the way. So I'm going to recommend, uh, I'll make the motion to uh, go with the administrative recommendation. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Amity and a second by Mr. Dirk Gidry. We do have one more comment by Mr. Steve Trosclair. Yes, I just want to make uh, one recommendation. If your intentions are to demolish the structure uh, and clear the property out, you might want to do it before we condemn it because, well, before it gets condemned and the condemnation process goes through because you're going to pay a lot more through this process okay. than you can hire an independent contractor to do it. Okay. Okay, thank you. So we have a motion and a second. Members, vote your machine. Clerk, have all the votes been cast? Motion passes. Yeah. Item M, 175 Jennings Lane, mm -hmm. owned by the estate of Elwa Douglas Jr., care of Vera Bolden. Ms. DeYoung. Yes, so we received the complaint for this location in July of 2021. We've issued notice, um, conducted inspections. The last inspection was February 23rd. It uh, continues to be in violation, so we're going to recommend that it's condemned. Okay. Take your time. Hi, my name is Vera Bolden. I live at 2724 Savannah Road, Homer, Louisiana, 70360. My name is Judy Thomas. My address is 63 Kirkland Loop, Homer, 70363. Yes, and, and do you have any comments or concerns about this property, and what is your what is your plan? Let me, let me, let me talk. My name is Cornelius Bolden III, 2724 Savannah Road. I'm a Louisiana, this is my wife, Vero. I am helping them to try to get this property in order. 
They had a young lady came up uh, Thursday, taking a look at the property. And uh, she came back again uh, Friday. I was there both days. And then Saturday, I started cutting grass. And uh, we did, it took me two hours, really, to pick up bottle of glass, cans, just throw everything on other people's property. And uh, Mr. Harden, I apologize to you for not calling you and I'll let you know that what I was doing. So we are, I'm helping them to trying to get it in order. Yes, thank you. And this is actually in the district that I represent. Um, but um, so these pictures that you're, you're seeing right now, these were taken before you cleared up the grass? Yeah, before okay. I cleared it. I, I'm not finished clearing it. I'm trying to cut the whole thing. But th right there, that's cut. So what is your intention with the property then? Well, we had applied for the FEMA to come and um, tear the houses down, but we haven't heard anything yet. So we just, they told us just wait until, you know, because we did all the paperwork that we needed and we turned it in. So we don't know what's going on after that. It, Ms. Dion, is this on the FEMA, FEMA demo program? Or? Uh, not as the last time we checked. When we did, it was 171 Jennings Lane that we did see um, on, the, on the list. We did not see 175 Jennings Lane. We don't have no 175. That's right there. Do you know when you did the the paperwork? We did the paperwork oh. last year. Okay. All right. Do so you have I copies? Went, I went over there, and uh, they gave me the papers. They told me who to get to sign. We signed everything. We turned it in, and I went back, and they said, everything is, is done. We're just waiting for y'all to give them, whoever give them the paper to go and clean the property off. Since this is in, in the district I represent, um, I'm going to recommend to the council that we postpone this until the next uh, hearing. However, I'd like you to check your paperwork and just check and make sure there wasn't any clerical errors and then bring that paperwork to Ms. Dion's office. That way they have it on file okay. um, because they do kind of keep track of the ones that are in the FEMA demo program and don't necessarily send those to condemnation. Uh, so if you guys could do that. And they'll give you some time uh, before June. Okay, so that would be my recommendation where do we go? to the council. Because I gave them all the papers I had. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any papers besides what I gave them. Okay. Uh, could you quite possibly call Ms. Dion's office tomorrow and they can help point you in the right direction as to what you need to get together? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Number. All right. Thank you. I have a few um, questions, though. Yes, sir. Something else I want to say. Where the, where the grass is, the grass is cut. I hadn't cut the trees. I got to take that down with a saw. Okay. Just let you know, all that grass on that side next to the Aiken property, that been cut. Okay, thank you so much. And I have a few comments. Um, Mr. D uh, Mr. Babin. Yeah, you, you just said June. Did you mean April for the April, next year? I'm sorry, okay. yes, yeah, April. I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, April, yes. All right. Mr. Harding? <laughs> yes, like you heard before, I... I create an open line of communication with uh, Ms. Dion right here. There uh, are specifics in reference to this piece of property that she's actually looking for you guys to take care of. Uh, whether the FEMA um, uh, people will actually come in to assist you, uh, it could actually benefit you if you clear the property and make sure it's boarded up if you don't have that opportunity. Uh, we're in March right now. Uh, next month is April. So, you know, man, you'll be right back here again. So uh, if you do something, you know, man, contact her, let her know what you was doing, and perhaps bring some pictures over there, see how we can do it so we can actually take care of this. Um, occasionally, I pass down there. It's just so unfortunate, like you said, we didn't get an opportunity to see what we can do to actually try to assist you. Uh, with, uh, the problem is, too, uh, you know, we go and we fix up stuff, and the people in the neighborhood tear it back down, keep throwing stuff in the yard, you know, we just, like you said, beating a dead horse. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mr. Harding. Mr. Darren Guidry. Uh, yes, and 171, is that uh, also owned by you guys? Or? Yeah. Okay, because uh, uh, the tax assessor has the same ownership under 171, yeah, so it's yeah. possible when you filed the FEMA, you know, it, it might have been filed under 171 <laughs> instead of 175 by accident. You may want to check that as well. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gedry. Mr. Jules Abair. One of the uh, questions I believe that 
council should also start inquiring about is all these properties insured. My concern is on certain of these structures, it looked like to me, especially with some, and it's going to be real hot, is adjacent property owners, fire hazards. So we need to take that into consideration. I know we want to try and help everybody, but one of the questions that we need to start inquiring is, are these properties insured? Thank you for that, Mr. Hebert. Mr. Chris Pulaski. Yeah, I, I wanted to echo what Mr. Aber just said, but also um, on Friday when we met with the uh, consultants regarding the FEMA demolition program, they are going to be sending us an updated list, um, and that list will be provided to nuisance abatement so we can continue to keep up to date on what properties are part of that and which aren't. I mean, there, there may be some that just flat out aren't approved by FEMA, so those are the ones that are going to have to go through the condemnation process. And for reasons like Mr. Hebert just pointed out, the sooner the better. I'd also like to add that, um, you know, items like tall grass and, and overgrown shrubs and stuff have nothing to do with the condemnation. It's good to, that they keep up the property and all because otherwise they'll get tall grass violations. But as far as condemnation goes, um, it's limited to the structure itself. Okay. Thank you so much. Mr. Bab, Mr. Babin. Yeah, Mr. Abair just said we should start asking about insurance. Is that something that, uh, Dion, that y'all could put in the questionnaire when the people are, when you're doing the process, or rather than us wait here to ask if they have insurance or not? We need to know it on the front end, is, is what I'm saying. If that, in fact, is something that we should be doing. Mm, yeah, I'm sure we can probably... Uh, maybe state that somewhere we, we, in a notice or something. Yeah. We need to ask, I'm sure not only ask, we need to ask for proof of insurance rather than just saying, yeah, do you have insurance? Somebody might say, yes, I have insurance. We need to have, we, we need to have documented proof that they have it. Mm -hmm. Mr. Abair? Well, just remember the way this process works. Y'all sitting as the judge of the condemnation ordinances as to whether condemned or not. A lot of these people, we just sent out notices to that your structure is coming before the council for condemnation. What she could do is, is in her notice, is ask them to bring proof of insurance. Correct. And I, I would agree that would be a process, but I still think the question should be asked. I'm seeing some of these structures, and Chris and I have been discuss, have discussed this, is about especially with the summit coming in dry wood, is we got only uh, part of the dilapidation and the self safety and health process is is not just that structure, but is adjacent neighbors. No, no, and, and I understand that, Mr. David, but if, in fact, we want to protect the neighbors, we need to know that up front. It might be three months before we get I it agree, up here where we can ask the question. I agree, okay? I agree. That's why I'm saying we need to ask that on the front end and get some documentation. All right. All right. Thank you. Mr. Harding? Again. Um. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Harding. I had it on. I, it wasn't, yeah. No. I agree with the whole condemnation process. Now we're talking about insurance. Look at these folk, right? Look at the people that just left you. You know what I mean? So you're asking them to have insurance. What does what factor that has what we what decision that we actually have? I understand fire prevention. I'm a retired firefighter. It's hypothetical. This is gonna catch fire, it might not catch fire. That's hypothetical. You can't force these people to have the insurance. What if they don't have insurance? And, and, and that's the point I'm trying to get. I agree with everything we're trying to do here, but I think it's making it a little bit more difficult for these people here to handle their business. What is the requirement of the insurance? Why, why we're trying to actually get them to tear that down. If they can, uh, a lot of people here in, in Turbon Parish cannot afford insurance. And that's what I'm looking at right here. And a lot of folk can't afford to have the repairs to these houses. Now, looking at this particular structure, and perhaps I know we can actually uh, gauge the damage from high Ida, and then that might be a point also. Prior to Ida, is, was this in the same condition? Yes, it, it was. We received a complaint prior to Ida. Yes. Yeah. So therefore, that'll be on the boulders. Right. So the, it's, it's the point about the hypothetical. We can't see what's going to happen. And I'm supporting the condemnation uh, hearings and things like that. Don't create some things that is impossible for these people to lose uh, what they're interested in. So uh, I agree with that. Uh, but uh, somehow or another, the hypothetical say it will catch fire. I understand prevention. But you can't put the hardships on these people right here 
uh, just because of uh, some possibility. I, I drive down the road every day, so the possibility of me having an accident uh, is just short of having a heart attack. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harding. Mr. Dirk Gidry. Yeah, I'm going I'm to I'm piggyback on you with you, Mr. Harding. I believe in the same thing. There's no way that this council can make somebody have insurance. There's, there's, well, yeah, but I mean, you, what you going to ask for, Danny, if they got insurance? Yes. Well, how about the people that's elderly and can't afford insurance? So are we going to go knock on the doors and ask them if they got, their house is just as liable to catch fire as somebody else that don't have a, you know? How do we do that? We can't just go knock on everybody's door because I know all the elderly people that don't have brand new houses that can't afford insurance with the insurance prices today. So how are we going to enforce this? Because just because this house is condemned, we're going to make sure that they got insurance? Or how about these people that's living in a house that it's not the greatest house of all? Do we go and ask them if they got insurance? Where do you cut it off at? Thank you, Mr. Gidry. Mr. Gerald Michel. Um. If Mr. Babin wants to speak before no, me, ahead. okay. Um, I don't see where having insurance is going to change the decision of the council. And if it's not going to change the decision of the council, <coughs> why why bring it up at, at, uh, at the condemnation hearing? Um, now, if somebody can point out why, then I'm, I'm certainly, I certainly want to hear. Also, um, the, the people here who are here representing the property have stated that they're waiting on FEMA, but they have no documentation, and the planning department and uh, and uh, has no documentation that the request for for um, uh, demolition has or, or for anything has has been done through FEMA. So we don't know that. So my question is, if we voted to um, to condemn this property, and then y'all went back and found, oh well, they had it under the different address by accident or something like that, can that be postponed and and, and reversed uh, at some time later? Yes, if we condemn it and we find that information out prior to demolition, demolition, yes, we can bring it back to the council and rescind the uh, previous order. Okay, now, I, and I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to concur with whatever uh, um, the council person for this area says, but, but I think that that's something we need to think about. Um, you know, we, if indeed we can reverse it, if they do have a, an application into FEMA, but if not, this has been a long time, and and uh, and. And, you know, I think it's time to concur with the administration on condemnation. Just my two cents. And, and again, I will, I will concur with whatever the, uh, the uh, council person from that district suggests. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Michel. Mr. Tillman. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chairperson. I just don't want to see another layer placed on here. I don't see what the insurance uh, situation should be part of this. And, and I, I got to tell you, let's say, for example, I got a piece of property out there and I come, it's before us for condemnation. And uh, you ask me, Mr. Tim, you have insurance? No. So where we go from there? I'm just saying, where we go from there when I tell you no? You see, so we don't need to put that little layer on here. Just be additional work for you guys to do when the average person gonna, probably don't have insurance anyway. And, and if they don't, they tell you no. And we move on. So let's, let's not add another layer to this. Thank you, Mr. Tillman. And I'm sorry, Mr. Pulaski, you had a comment earlier yeah. based Thank on... Thank you. Okay. I can't tell when... Like, it doesn't flash or anything. Well, we don't have a, a cue, a very accurate cue. Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. All right. Um, so just a couple of thoughts. Um, insurance, uh, chances are if the if the structure is on the list for the PPDR, uh, they probably don't have insurance anyway. Um, because one of the things that makes a property ineligible is if the owners received insurance money to remedy the situation, and they haven't. Um, the other thing is, um, like we oftentimes will see with planning commission or some of the other boards or commissions that I'm involved with, um, we'll have uh, actions taken with conditions. So one thing that could take place here is, um, since we don't know what the status is with the FEMA demolition program, you could consider a condemnation um, uh, on the condi but it, rather than having to come back and rescind that action, could it be that you condemn a property? Um, but if it's on the condition that it's part or approved by the FEMA demolition program, then you allow the demolition to occur through that program, and it's not through the condemnation process. Kind of like what we do now, where oftentimes you guys will condemn a property and then give the property owner X number of days to remedy it to demo it on their own so that 
you know, if they don't, then we don't have to come back to you all for that. I mean, you could do something similar to that and give this this property owner uh, the ability to have it demo through that FEMA PPDR program. Yes, um, Mr. Jules Aber, do you have something to piggyback on? Yeah, just that? just a couple of things about the FEMA program. Remember, it's got to be related to the storm. So some of these structures have been dilapidated way before the storm, and that's why they're not going to qualify. Let me explain to you my purpose about the insurance. I never said to say that if you didn't have insurance, condemn. I want to make that clear. What I said was is that that should be a consideration factor and in, in something to look at at the person's motive. Do they really are going to bring this property out of dilapidated condition? Because I'm just concerned we have other people to worry about in these conditions. Okay, no difference than if it's a commercial piece of property and we worried about somebody going sleeping in there and we know that the owner is doesn't have liability insurance on it and we knowingly allowing these people to stay there. So I said was, is the only reason why I brought up about the insurance was, is that to ask that as a question, it would give you some comfort in knowing that if you asked a person, do you have insurance? And they said, yes, we have it and it's covered it. That if you give an extension of time, then you, you at least taking that into consideration. With regards, Dirk, to your hypothetical about, yes, there are people that have homes and do not have like maybe when. But I would say the vast majority of people, you can buy a liability, which is much cheaper while they went. And they may not have it. But let's look at this a big difference. A person living in a non-dilapidated, non-condemnable home that doesn't have insurance is there taking care of their property. And the chances of something happening versus a vacant piece of property, in my opinion, is a lot less. I can understand that. I'm not here to, I never said to make it a requirement to have insurance. I said to ask it. I thought it should be an askable question if you have it. But I can see a vast difference that if a person is living in a home and they may not have insurance, the chances of something happen are a lot less slim than a than a wooden structure that's waiting to go up on fire. There's two of them right there up on West Park that that burn on the corner of West Park or on the corner of West Park. Now, good thing they got to them quick. Okay, but you can go look at them. The two blue houses, they're both burnt, and they have houses almost sitting on top of them. So my the only thing is, is I am doing is to advise and to protect the government and us in making these decisions, at least that, this that it was considered. It shows an intent, okay? And if you can't afford it, if you drive, you got to have insurance. You can't drive a car without insurance. So what I'm saying is, is that you, you, only, my only point is, is that I, I'm saying is it should be a consideration in the process. I'm not saying, because if a person comes up here and says, no, we don't have insurance, that that's automatically a condemnation. I've never said that. was not what I was uh, driving at. At least I know comfort that if you're going to sit there and let a piece of property that may take years to rehabilitate and something at least you ask the question. So, Mr. Jules, I appreciate your, your comments on that, it's my understanding that you only need insurance if you have a mortgage. Um, and that could be something that we can look into later um, because this this conversation about insurance has kind of drug, drug on. But we do have a couple more um, comments. Mr. Babin, Daniel Babin. No, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with Jules's explanation right there. Okay, mm -hmm. I think it covers all the bases and it covers the parish. Mm -hmm. And it gives us one, as he said, I know Mr. Tillman said we don't need to add another layer, but it gives us one more bit of information when we're making our condemnation is all I'm saying. Yeah. Simply because if someone had insurance and didn't take care of it, then uh, here we it's coming dropped on the parish. So, uh, I mean, there's two sides to every coin. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Darren Guidry. I'm sorry. That's okay. And um, yeah, information for many, anybody who may be watching this, you know, of course, we're sitting as, as jurors, but I can tell you, I, as a juror, am going to assume that all these homes have no liability insurance mm -hmm. because I've dealt with this enough. And if you, they do an inspection in this, I mean, I got a, a de denial letter because my fire extinguisher was three months outdated mm -hmm. and I had to change it, show them, and then they reinstated it. They're going to look at this as no. So I'm going to assume and all these properties come to us. I'm assuming they have no liability insurance. So it's on you guys. If you have insurance, it's up to y'all to come up to the podium and say, counsel, I've got insurance because that's going to weigh on my decision of whether I don't condemn it. 
So, you know, uh, the onerous is on you guys as far as to show, but I'm going to assume all of these don't have insurance because of, of my experience as as one of the members of the council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gidry. And we're um, we're about to make a motion and vote, but after we do, I would like one of you guys to come get my, my cards, and you can call me once you get that paperwork together, and I'll help you get it to the proper um, proper area. Uh, Mr. John Amity. Mr. Hebert. Yes, sir. I don't remember the exact wording, but in the past, we've um, condemned but given them 90 days. Yeah. You remember what the wording on that motion is? Yeah, yes, I do. We, if you remember a few meetings back, we, we and it was working well, I thought, is that what we were doing is, is the council uh, was condemning, and then it conditioned, and if the person said, look, I really going to bring this property back into commerce and I'm going to do it, and y'all would say, fine. Then y'all would put the onerous on the property owners. Uh, look, I, you know, you're talking about, and look, I'm not against anybody. I understand. Okay, I just want to know the wording. But the wording the was, the, the wording was, is that we're condemning and we will, con Condemn. it's condemning, but we're, it's subject to giving you uh, 90 days, 120 days to bring it back up. If you do it within that, you call our department and she goes out and verifies it and it's gone. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, so I you condemn condition upon giving so many days to bring it back in the, into to, into a habitable right. home. So okay, and, so I and think, why I brought. And I want to stay consistent. Right. Okay. So I think what we've done is the ninety days. So I want to make a motion that we condemn and give the uh, the owners ninety days to clear up any other matters they can get with Miss uh, Miss Dion. It's on this particular piece. On yes. this particular piece. That's my motion. Okay. okay. All right. We have a so, motion by Mr. John Amity and a second by Mr. Dirk Gidry. Uh, members, cast your vote. Wait till it's lit there. Cast your vote. Clerk, have all the votes been cast? Motion passes. You, can you guys come get this? Make sure that you explain to what you just did, Jessica, so that they could understand. Yeah. Could you please call me tomorrow and we'll talk about exactly what happened? Okay, thank We're you. On the you explain to them what you just did. Okay, all right. John, you explain. One of y'all explain to them. I want them to say what y'all did. Okay, so we actually made a motion tonight that we are going to condemn the pro the property, but we're giving you 90 days to get the paperwork, the accurate paperwork that you have to our office. And so once again, I gave you my card. You can call me and I can help you get that paperwork to where it needs to go. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Item N, 1421 Bonvalance Street, owned by Terrell May Turner, Estate, Estate Rosa Robinson, Johnson Joseph, Tammy Verrett Barquette, Angel A. Verrett Robinson, Barbara Lewis Moore, Felton Lewis Taylor, and Sybil Verrett Coleman. Ms. Dion. Okay, so we received the complaint of this location in December of 2020. We've issued notice, conducted inspections. The last inspection was February 23rd, and it continues to be in violation, so we're going to recommend that it's condemned. Uh, yes, ma'am. Can you please uh, state your name and address? Uh, yes, my name is Sybil Verrett Coleman. My address is 220 Antoine <coughs> Street, and that's here in Homer. The zip is 70360. Yes, ma'am. And, and what are your um, what are your plans with this property? Okay, um, this is the first of my knowledge about this. Um, I was just told about this. Um, the lady who normally stays in there is my cousin, Terrell. She is in a hospital right now. She's in a rehab center. So I have to get in contact with her and her children to find out exactly what they are planning on doing with this property because she was staying there before she went into this rehab. Yeah, um, we have uh, Mr. Tanner McGee here. He's a representative for this property. Thank you. Uh, yes, and Mr. Darnell Howard contacted us. We actually advertised for this. I think he believes he lives in Georgia. Right. I'm not sure if he's related. He's been aware of it. That's our son. That's yeah. your son. And I had him contact Ms. Dion, and he was in favor of con condemnation when I spoke. <laughs> so the owner was in favor of condemnation. It's not that's him. The, it's, it's not. It's, he, it, she's correct. That's the son of the owner. He lives in Georgia. The owner's not there. He made it sound like she wasn't ever coming back to the property and that it was best being condemned. Okay. Mr. Alvin Tillman. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sybil, a uh, question. We're looking at the condition of this property. Do you see any way y'all are going to be able to repair this property? I mean, just look at the condition of it. 
No, I don't. I don't. I don't see where you can fix it up. Mm -hmm. I really don't. Um, but it is Tara's property, mm -hmm. and by her being in a rehab, we really need to talk with her because that property was her mom's and dad's property that they gave to her that she's been staying in there all this time. So I don't. I could say yes, condemn it, but that's somebody else's who really was staying there, property. You understand? So I need to really talk with her to explain to her that it's going to cost a whole bunch of money. Do she have the resources, you understand, to fix this property? Because I don't want to say yes, condemn it, and then this is somebody else who actually was staying here. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Sure. Uh, Madam uh, Chair, I'm going to concur with administration. All right. Thank you, Mr. Tillman. Sorry. Um, so we have a motion, a second. One more comment, though, Mr. Daniel Babin. The, the, the lady that we're speaking of is elderly, I'm assuming. Um, yes. Okay. I... She's, uh, she had a stroke, so she's in a rehab. Sure. But, so... but again, and, and I'm, please forgive me if I say something wrong. I don't think anyone can go back and live in this particular place. Right. Okay. Right. I, listen, I'm not arguing that point. Yeah, I mean, I, we, would, really we would do a disjustice to her if we allowed someone to go back. And I, I mean, as Mr. Gidry was just pointing out, the meter is still attached to this house. That means there's electricity. Oh, there's no meter in it. Okay. You see, I didn't see that. So there's no meter in it. I, again, I, I just wanted to bring up the fact that. I don't see how we could allow someone to go back and live in this particular place, yeah. especially Ms. someone who had a stroke. Mr. Right. Jules Hebert. Uh, the, you, there is an ad hoc attorney that was appointed to represent the property owner, and my advice to you is that the ad hoc attorney said that there's no objection to condemnation, and so you should accept the ad hoc attorney's representations over somebody that's here saying nothing. I'm not saying anything against the lady, but he's technically appointed to represent the property owner. Yes, sir. We already have that motion. And in, in, do we have a second on that one? No, okay. All right. And a set, we have the motion to concur with administration by Mr. Tillman and a second by Mr. Dirk Gidry. Members, vote your machines. Clerk, have all the votes been cast? Motion passes. Yes. Okay, so explain to me, since you all passed that it, it's going to be... Uh, yes, ma'am, it's been... Going down? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so who is going to tear it down and how much this is going to cost? That because is, my name is on this property, too. Yes, ma'am, you can call the office and they can explain all that to you tomorrow. Okay, so y'all not giving us the opportunity to find somebody to do it ourselves? Yes, ma'am, if you if you can do that within the time frame, yes, ma'am, you can... What is the time frame? Uh, yeah, we can uh, let Ms. Dion explain that. Uh, looks like we're giving until I think March 31st. Of yes, what? March 31st of this year. What kind of time you think you'll need to get this thing torn down? Listen, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I, this is, I'm trying. This, I'm this, trying. To be honest with you, this is look. This is my first time knowing about this. So someone just called me. So I just up and came here to see exactly what was going on and what's taking place. If she talked, if y'all talked to his her son and her son gave permission, he never related that information to us. So it's just my aunt's name that's on here. So it's, it's more, and my sister's name is on here. My two sisters' name is on here. So we need to know, you know what I'm saying? We're going in this thing blind. Okay, uh, I'm suggesting that you, you know, you go out and try and see if you can get somebody to tear that property down. But as of tonight, it's been recommended that the property be uh, torn down. So okay, I, I understand. So I just need to call to find out how much is this is going to cost. And if you if you find somebody, I mean, if no, you find I'm somebody saying so. It, if y'all tear it down, will it cost us anything? It's going to cost yes. more if we tear it down. If you get somebody, it wouldn't cost as much as we're going to charge if the parish tear it down. That's that's what I need to find out. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. That's what I need to know. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And we have one more comment, Mr. Steve Charles Claire. Miss Coleman. Yes. Okay. Uh, I actually had that similar situation once in my district, and and Miss Miss Stewart will work with you through your council person. Um, if you if you need to get it, if you're gonna plan on getting it tore down, which I I would recommend you do it yourself because uh, the parish will cost you a lot more through the parish. Uh, if if you can't get a, a you know if it takes you, uh, your date is March. 
31st or 20 whatever if it take if it, you can't get nobody till june or may <coughs> or april you know anything within reason call your council person show them that you have a contract to get it tore down and miss stewart will hold back on contracting it out it'll still be condemned but she can hold the contractors back for a month or two to give you some time to get your contractor lined up to do it and she she generally will work with you guys through your council person on that deal so you know now we can't you know they're not going to let it go a year no six no months. I, no sir but I, if, I, you know, if you're I, making an effort and you got you've got a contract signed that your contract is going to be there at a certain date i, I promise you that your council person or, or, or hold back on getting the contractors parish contractors out there to to tear it down and that way you can save a lot of money keep a lien off your property okay uh yeah uh mr tanner mcgee Yeah, and I just want to put on that I spoke to your, I guess, nephew on January 17th. That's the date that I spoke to him, and he expressed that to me at that time. I haven't talked to him. He called back one other time, again, expressed it, but it was within that, with a day or two within that time frame, but I haven't spoken to him again. Just put just want everybody to know what the time frame was. Thank you so much for that. And yes, ma'am, so definitely call your, your council member, which is uh, currently Mr. Tillman, and he'll be able to help you with that process. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Item O, 113 Vera Street. Oh, I'm sorry. We we did not vote. We did vote. I'm sorry. Yeah, we did vote. Okay. Item O, 113 Vera Street, owned by Errol John Bourgeois, Jr. Ms. Dion. Oh, okay. Since, the last, since we requested the hearing, um, we have had a few discrepancies and some additional information that we'd like to gather for this property um so we would like to recommend that it's uh continued until the next uh hearing of april 24th uh we have a motion by mr Amity and a second uh by mr darren gidry members vote your machine clerk have all the been votes been cast motion passes item p 107 brune street Structure two, owned by Kurt F. Kleibert. Ms. Dion. That's me. Mm -hmm. We're going to have Ms. Dion speak first, and then um, we'll let you speak second after, sir. Okay. And, okay, so with this location and after requesting the hearing, uh, the, the mobile home, it is actually not in a condition that we would deem it dilapidated and dangerous. However, the property does contain an abundance of junk. I'm so, no, I have no photo. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, the property does contain an abundance of junk and trash, and so we're going to actually process it um, accordingly for that junk and trash. Yes, sir. Can you please state your I'm name? I'm sorry. I didn't do the recommendation, so we recommend that it's closed. Okay. Thank you. Um, sir, can you please state your name and your address? My name is Kirk Kleber. I live at... Um, 615 Natalie Drive, Homa, Louisiana. And I'm going to restore the, the property. Um, between the tenants I had in it and the hurricanes, I kind of got behind. Otherwise, I'm, I'm fixing it. And thank you for making that statement about the there wasn't anything wrong with the home because I was really going to be upset about that. <laughs> right, so. Mr. Gerald Michel. Uh, thank you, and I, I believe you live in my district, so uh, uh, if you can get that property cleaned up, that'd Shreve, be great. My, Shreve, Shreve is your district? You live on Natalie Drive? No, I, I live on Natalie yeah, Drive. Yeah, then you live in my district, yes. But the property's in No, uh, no, I'm, uh, okay. I noticed your address. Um, so, yeah, get, uh, if you can get that property cleaned up, uh, that'd be great, because it sounds like that's the only problem that you have right now, and uh, and I think you're going to be good to go, and I'm, I appreciate you coming out here and speaking on the matter. Motion to go with and I also have a work permit already. All right. So we have a motion to go to agree with administration by Mr. John Amity and a second by Mr. Dirk Gidry. Members, vote your machine. <coughs> Clerk, have all the votes been cast? Motion passes. <sighs> Item Q, 1414 Keith Street, owned by Michael J. Armit Sr. Ms. Dion. Okay, so complaint was received March of 2021. 
We've issued notice, conducted inspections. Our last inspection was February 23rd. The structure is uh, continues to be in violation, so we're gonna recommend that it's condemned. Do we have anybody here representing this property? No. Mr. Dirk Gidry. My motion is to concur with administration. We, ha we have a motion by Mr. Dirk Gidry and a second by Mr. Daniel Babin. Members, vote your machine. Motion passes. Item R, 6446 Shrimpers Row, owned by Bennett Lester Frizzella. Frisella. Thanks for that clarification. Uh, Ms. Dion. Oh, yes, since the request of the hearing, uh, this structure has been demolished or removed, so we're going to recommend that the file is closed. Okay. Make a motion to uh, concur with the administration. Okay. Okay. We have a motion to concur with administration by Mr. Daniel Babin and a second by Mr. Dirk Gidry. Members, vote your machine. Motion passes. Item S, 710 Greenwich Street, owned by Sherry Smith Stadium. Ms. Dion. The initial complaint was received September of 2021. We've issued notice, conducted inspection. Um, our last inspection was February 23rd, and it continues to be in violation, so we're going to recommend that it's condemned. Is there anyone here representing this property? No. So there's been a recommendation that it be condemned by administration. Any, anyone here? Nobody's here. I'm not here. I'm for administration. All right. Okay. We have a motion by Mr. Tillman and a second by Mr. Daniel Babin. Members, vote your machine. Clerk, have the votes been cast? <coughs> motion passes. Okay. All right. So item T is the same address. It's 710A. Do we have to do that one as well? Um, okay. Actually, all right. and the next one also, it's all the same property, same owner. Uh, yeah, and you, yes. Okay, all right. So 710A Greenwich Street, owned by Sherry Smith Stadium. Uh, Ms. Dion. Yes, so we received this in May of 2022. Um, issued notice, conducted inspections. The last inspection was February 23rd, continues to be in violation, so we're recommending that it's condemned. Is anybody here for this property? Mr. Tillman. Yes, uh, Dion, have any family member contact you at all as it relates to this property? Yeah, we've been contacted by the family member, which they, yeah, they feel that what they've gotten into here was not worth it, but they did not uh, give us what their intentions were with the property. Okay. All right. Uh, we have a motion by Mr. Tillman and a second by Mr. Daniel Babin. Members, vote your machine. Clerk, have the votes been cast? Motion passes. Item U, 712 Greenwich Street, owned by Sherry Smith Stadium. Yes. Uh, Ms. So, Young. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Complaint was received September of 2021. Um, notices issued. Inspections conducted. The last inspection was February 23rd. It continues to be in violation. So we're going to recommend that it's condemned. Motion to All right. We have a motion to concur with administration by Mr. Tillman and a second by Mr. Daniel Babin. Members vote your machine. Clerk, have the votes been cast? Motion passes. Item V, 629 Angeron Street, owned by Delta SJ LaBeouf. Ms. Dion. Um, can we see if uh, the owner is here for this? Is location? the owner here for this property? Yes, sir. You can come up to the podium. My name is Ruben LaBeouf, 629 Andron Street. Mr. Rubin, do you live at this location? We couldn't confirm that information. I still have utilities. Since the storm, I had to live in 
talking about? With a friend, I do everything I can to go back, cut some grass, you know that, cut some grass, try to do what I can to keep going. I had a stroke. None of you people care about the people down here today. You took some people out of here, and you know damn well you didn't do right. I got five minutes to tell you what I think, and I'm going to do it, and you're going to listen. I'm just <coughs> asking for five minutes of your time. Sir, you have three minutes. I'll give you a brief resume to start. The only reason I'm here tonight because I'm poor and cannot afford to yet recover from the worst storm Terrebonne Parish has experienced in many years. I took care of a family member for the last five and a half years of her life. That was every day 24 hours a day with essentially very little help. Now I'm getting old and I had a stroke. I had to learn to walk again and I'm now better than in the past. I'm a veteran of the U.S. Army. I was drafted into the Army. September 1969, 30 days after I finished Nichols College requirements for a Bachelor of Science degree in biology. U.S. Army was my first experience with government interfering with my life and my plans for the pursuit of happiness. I've been able to survive to 76 years of age and now I encounter government attempting to change my life once again. Since Hurricane Ida passed through the area, I've had to move to Thibodeau while I helped a friend recover from her home being destroyed. She lived here in town. I was able to help with recovery and restoration of her property she helped me by allowing me to stay with her in Thibodeau at her daughter's house. She is now 91 years old, and we will help each other to survive to the next day. Eventually, I found I could not expect to work on two properties at the same time. I no longer have any transportation of my own. I have not been able get any help from any agency up to this part of my recovery. From Hurricane Ida, I've been trying to save enough money to be able to repair my home with my own funds. We don't ask nothing for the government. I'm here tonight asking this group to not condemn anything that I own. I'm asking for more time now that I am able to walk again and get some work done. Motion to extend. I'm only sir, 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 we need a motion to extend your time. I just had a motion to extend your time by Mr. Dirk Gidry and a second by Mr. Alvin Tillman. Um, I can. All right. Yes, sir. I'm here tonight asking this group not to condemn anything that I own. I'm asking for more time now that I'm able to walk again and get some work done. I'm only asking the government for some more time to do my work. It will not cost the government anything to help me. My property can be restored. I plan to remove the remains of my Lord shed behind my house. We built it, and I'm going to take it down. This will be done at no cost to the government.
I can accomplish that job myself. I have already got an estimate for the bare roof of my house. This job will be accomplished. I have already removed some of the damaged areas at my home. You guys took pictures, never even noticed. Never even noticed. I've already removed some of the damaged areas, floor joinings which were, which were managed in the hurricane winds have since been removed from the front and back entrance. Storm debris has been removed from my property. The windows on the home have had some of the sheet metal removed. That sheet metal on the windows saved my home from the storm winds. You guys didn't want me to have sheet metal. That's what saved my home. My home survived the storm. It's a very strong structure. It only needs some repair. I noticed that your building right here that we're meeting in here tonight has also been damaged by the hurricane. It has not yet been completely restored. You still have more work to be done. Well, you know what? I'm only ask, asking if the government tower building can still do some restoration work, then let me also do some restoration work on my property. I'm only asking for equal treatment, equal treatment under the law. I'm not finished. This is still the United States of America. I am asking the government to do its job by helping the people. I've been able to survive up to this point by trying to save enough money to be able to repair my home with my own money. I've asked the government for nothing. There are many people I have sent, seen, since the hurricane, many people I've seen since the hurricane that have greater losses than me. Greater loss. I still have a house. I just need to get it repaired. You people want to condemn what little I have left and throw me out of my house. Is this how the government helps the elderly and the poor? Now listen to this. Under the 14th Amendment of the Constitution of the United States of America, the government had no right to violate the constitutional rights of citizens. You have done some of that tonight to some of the people who left, and you don't even know it. I'm not finished. Yeah. Property owners are asking that their government obey the law of the Constitution of the United States. Property owners are saying simply this. Stop stealing our property. If you must take it, do it the right way. Pay for it. This is not too much to ask. If anyone hearing me tonight can help me in any way, please feel free to contact you. Contact me. Thank you for listening. I'm surprised I got a chance to see that. I'm very surprised. Thank you, sir. I appreciate Thank your you. passion. Thank you. We have a few comments. Uh, Mr. Gerald Michel. Mr. LaBeouf, first of all, thank you for your service to your country, to our country. Um, secondly, so glad to see you recovering well from your stroke. I am. Uh, you know, you're coming across um, with your right mind, very intelligent, and, and, and we're grateful. And I'm going to ask you because uh, because the person in your district is the, is the chairman of, of the group. So I'm going to ask you, in, in, instead of her, what, what would you like for us to do? How long would it take you to get this house in compliance? You know, would you really would like, I, would I really like? Give me a year and a half. I'm going to tear down my shed. I'm going to fix the roof. Anything else need to be fixed, going to be fixed. Let me ask you this question, sir. Yes. And I'm not, I'm not expecting the answer to be everything, okay? I'm not expecting that at all. What can you have done in the next 90 days? I can't say 90 days. I'll say tomorrow. 
I'll be out there tearing down my shed. If you stay off my property, leave me do it. Well, that's uh, all I'm asking. I'm but, asking for some time. Uh, well, and and here's 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 I'm going to make a motion that we extend this for 90 days to the next to the next hearing. Not to expect you to have everything done, but to be able to get a report from the uh, nuisance abatement office saying that there's been significant pro progress. All right. Well, you, we what can, are you going to call it significant? Well, that's that's what I'm asking. And you ask me, I'm asking you. And, and I'm not the person to answer that question. Uh, All right. Uh, Miss Dion could pro possibly answer that question. But, uh, I, you know, that's but that's that's my recommendation is uh, is to. I don't want any condemnation. That's what I, I'm asking. Well, you ask me what I want. That's what I want. It's not sir, happening. Sir, sir, not sir, to condemn. Okay. Sir, sir, you're, you're being argumentative with with the. Council, and we're trying to help you. Yeah. The, the first thing I'd like you to do, because it is the district that I rep that I represent, I'd like you to apply for a demo permit, and you can do that with Mr. Chris Pulaski's office, no. and that will help you. That will give you time to start, and then once you get your shed um, torn down, call Chris's office and tell him I've got the shed torn down, and what's your next steps? No. Um, we just want to see a little bit of progress. We don't need to see a whole lot. No. We just want to see a little bit of progress. If it takes you a year, we'll continue this for a year. Right. But every time you come in, we just want to see a little bit of progress. First thing you need to do, though, is call Chris's office and get a <coughs> demo permit. You'll that, that permit will give you six months. I went we down. have one more comment, sir. And, um, Mr. Steve and, Trosco. And if I can finish one more yes, thing. Yes, yes. The, the demo permit that she's referring to is just for the shed, not for the home. Okay? So it's just to just to make some uh, some progress. Oh, uh, sir, sir, we have a few more comments. Uh, Mr. Jules Abair. Oh, yeah, yeah, the original. Excuse, excuse me, Mr. LeBlanc. Sure. Okay, the original question was never answered. Y'all asked him who was living in the house, who's the owner. This house is under Delta S. J. LaBeouf. I do not know who that is, and that hasn't been answered. That's She's dead. Uh, okay. She's dead. So is anybody living in the house, Mr. LeBlanc? Not right now. Not right now. I personally, I love to live in it, but. I have so much work to do, it doesn't pay to do any inside stuff. I have to do a bunch of stuff outside first. Are there any other family members involved besides yourself? We have two, two I have two sisters. Two sisters? Yes. Okay. You don't even know that. Okay, I know thank you, you. Don't. Thank you, sir. Um, one more comment we have, uh, Mr. Steve Trosclair. Yes, uh, Dion. Yes. <clears throat> I'm looking at this, and the initial complaint and the initial file was March 19, 2021. So that was even before the storm. So this thing was right. out. I, this thing was on the condemnation before the hurricane. Correct. Yes. And there wasn't any in at that time. There were not any uh, permits issued for repairs or or bringing into compliance then. So uh, I mean, it. So this this was actually started even before the hurricane. So the hurricane is not the reason it's on condemnation. Correct. The hurricane may have added to the reason, but it's not the reason it's on condemnation. Come look at my ship. Sir, I'm, sir, I'm not going to argue did. with so, you. Sir, we're this, see what the day, the day start lied. This thing was condemned. It was on the condemnation list before the hurricane. Sir, I'm going to I'm going to recommend to my fellow council members that we give you 90 days to get that permit. That will permit, that demo permit will give you six months. No. You can come back to us. No. 60, 60 days. days, I'm sorry. That demo permit will give you 60 days um, to to start that work. Uh, so we're giving you 90 days to get a 60-day permit. So, you know, you've got some time here. Um, and then you'll come back and you'll do it, do it then. Can we please get a motion and a second on this? All right, so we have a motion by Mr. Gerald Michel and a second. Okay, Mr. Tillman. I just need some clarification. You said you give him 90 days to get a 60 days permit. I'm 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 lost. Can y'all kind of clear that up for me? Because I'm kind of lost with that concept. A demolition permit gives you 60, 60 days, days to come. Correct. So what does 90 Cor days come in at? Well, we'll give him. We'll, we'll see him again in 90 days. So you want to extend it to the next meeting? Yes. Yes. However, if he has not even apply for their permit, then we'll have another conversation at that point. Um, so we have a motion and a second. Can we, members, can we please vote on this? Well, it's, oh, the yes, next meeting is April 24th. Okay. So that's six, that's about 60 days. So if you, you, you want to give him okay, let's, the next no, meeting let's do rather six, than the Let's ninth. do the next meeting at 60 days. All right. Yeah. Perfect. Because that will be, yeah, perfect. All right. Can we amend that? 
Do we need to amend that or no? No. All right. No, sir, your time's up. Um, yeah, I'll amend the motion to be until the next condemnation hearing. Correct. All right. Thank you. And thank you for that clarification, um, Ms. Dion. Members, cast your vote. Clerk, have all the votes been cast? All right. Motion passes. Thank you, sir. All right. You're going to send me a notice? Mm -hmm. Do I have to come back here? Yes, they will. Yes, sir. They will. All right. I'll be in your office, baby. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. Item W, 7409 Grand Caillou Road, owned by Miranda Ledger. Miranda Leger. Miranda Leger. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Ms. Dion. Okay, so we received the complaint for this location in March of 2021, issued notice, conducted inspections. The last inspection was February 23rd. Um, so we're going to, I'm sorry, and it's still... Uh, is in a dilapidated condition, so we're going to recommend that the structure is condemned. Okay. And yes, ma'am, give me one minute. Let me turn your mic on. Okay. All right. Yes, ma'am, please state okay. your name and address. Miranda Leger, 1039 Dawn Drive, Morgan City, Louisiana. I'm sorry, it turned off. Let me turn it back on. Okay. Again? Yeah, no, I, I got it. Yes, Okay. All right. Uh, yes, the, I did receive a notice in 2021. I complied with everything. Mrs. Brown at the time, I believe it was, closed everything out. It just needed grass cutting and what have you. And then now Hurricane Ida came through and blew out the windows and the door. And I do not plan to repair it, but there is someone that is interested in purchasing it. And she is not quite at the age to receive her IRA to pay for it. So I'm asking for maybe six months for her to get that money when she reaches that age so she can purchase it. She is in the process of cleaning it. She's working on it. And she is the owner of the adjacent property. Do we have any council members that want to discuss this? Mr. Daniel Bavin. Dion, can you can you give me your recommendation again? Uh, my recommendation is that it's condemned, but I did give her additional time because she had mentioned selling the property, but not the part about the um, age limit. Um, so I, I was giving her until April 30th to get it sold, and then, you know, we'd have to deal with the new owner. I didn't find out about her uh, situation with the retirement until a couple of weeks ago. Again, I'm not a banker, but is there any way that that individual can go to the bank and pledge their uh, IRA retirement against that? I'm just hypothetically throwing that out there. I have I, you, no you know, idea. I mean, again, we it, it makes it very difficult for us to want to give an additional time on, as Mr. Uh, Harding was saying earlier, on a hypothetical that somebody has to wait till their IRA can mature at their age to be able to buy this property. I since, especially since this was under condemnation since March of 2021. Oh, no, sir. It wasn't condemnation at that time. Ms. Brown never spoke of condemnation. She just said that it had to be cleaned. The proper, the grass had to be cut and kept up. But, Deanna, I'm, I'm, it's, it's not, it wasn't condemnation in March of 21? Yes, yes, it was. Okay. She did she not, received I, have, I have received before. nothing about condemnation, <laughs> I mean, only I, about I, cleaning it. I have to go on what our, our department I, I understand doing that, right but now. Okay. I was not told that at that uh, time, and I did clean it, and she did close it. Okay, I, I'd like to make a motion that we condemn, given her 90 days, as Jules had mentioned earlier, the ones that we've been using, okay? That way you can come back before us, okay? In night, well, 60 days. It's, it's 60 days. It's not really 90 days. It's April, yeah. April 24th, correct? But no, you, I'm sorry, no, you no, said no. condemn. Yeah. Okay, wait. All right. I want to get it right. Yes, right. Uh, Mr. Jules. No, what we're doing is, is that the, the 60 days had to do with bringing that other one y'all gave him 60 days to go get a demolition permit. Yeah. And to come back at the next meeting for y'all to look at it. What we talked about with Mr. Ahmed and what we've been doing is we condemn, subject to them bringing the property back up to co to what it's got to be within 90 days. If they don't have to do what they got to do within 90 days, it's condemned. 
Okay, so That's you give it them 90 days to, 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 to do it. And obviously, if you had a contract out there and they were doing the work, I, they should could be back anyway. So... But that's the way we've been doing that. Okay, and, and that's the motion that I want to make. And, and by that, the reason I'm saying that is, is this may help the lady that wants to buy the property secure different funding to buy it from you and then secure, uh, pay off her loan to whoever she borrows the money from, okay? We have an obligation with the parish. I, I'd like for, to, for you to be able to sell it, but it's been going on a, a very long time. So my motion is exactly what Jules just said. I, it'd be second. Diff, it'd be All right, we have days. a motion by Mr. Babin and a second by Mr. Michel. We have one more comment by Mr. Harding. Uh, Ms. Dion, this structure right, the structure right here, were these pictures taken uh, in March of last year? No, these pictures were taken February 23rd. February 23rd, right? Yes. So even after the hurricane, a uh, year and a half later, you know what I mean? So we have no boarding up, uh, no nothing, anything like that, you know what I mean? Going back to the hypothetical with the possibility of somebody buying a piece of structure, you know what I mean? Most other people that come up here, the requirement, the minimum requirement for whether somebody owns it or they plan to sell it, right now we don't have anything more than the hearsay. Uh, it still has to be boarded up. It still comes under the same uh, references that I've seen other people come up under here. I, I'm going to go with the uh, agreement over there, but then what I'm looking at right here is the fact that there's nothing boarded, boarded up and then actually nothing done around that. So um, that's my, my, my take okay. on that. May I say something? At the original time in 2021, the windows were intact. These windows were, were knocked out by Hurricane Ida. I am disabled. My husband is deceased. I am the sole owner of this property. And like I said, the lady next door has shown interest in buying it. I am leaving the state. I am moving to Chicago. My son is going to take care of me. So that's why I asked for the limit of time for the lady to purchase the property. I don't know how her funds are. All I know is what she told me but I can get written information if you need it. Uh, yeah, we have one more comment, Mr. Darren Guidry. <clears throat> yeah, and just a, another point. If this does go past the 90 days, and let's say they do assign it to a contractor and it is torn down, uh, the lady could still buy the property and just pay off the, uh, the, the contractor that tore it down, just pay the amount that is owed to the parish and pay you the difference. Okay, suppose she purchases it. Suppose she has someone that gives her money within the 90 days and she purchases if it. If it's before, then she's going to get it, but she's also buying a condemned home. So she's going to be in here if she doesn't tear it down or fix it up. So, you okay. know, uh, she's got to understand that when she's buying the property because she, she, yeah, she, she, has, she can't she just has spend been all told of her money buying the property and have no money to fix it up. Yeah, so. she, knows, she knows I'm here. Okay. And uh, she's well aware of, you know, my letter and being at this meeting, but she intends to fix it. All right. I don't. So we have Thank we you. already have a motion and a second. Uh, members, can we vote our machine? Oh, we have one more comment. I'm sorry, Mr. Bain Babin. The lady has intentions of buying it. It sounds like she. My recommendation to you. I mean, I, I made the motion that with the 90 days. Mm -hmm. My recommendation to you is to talk to that lady and let her know that. She needs to board up the, if she wants to buy it, she needs to board up these windows and okay. have the place cleaned up a little bit. And that's going to show a lot of good faith to this government. Right? Okay. So, right. I mean, that would be the next step to do it. Okay. And simply because, again, this has been going on so long. And I understand that the hurricane blew these windows out, but the hurricane was a year and a half ago. All right. right. And nothing has really been done towards it. So, again, you, you need to speak to the potential buyer okay. and let them help you help this whole situation out. Okay, so if she boards up the windows. Yeah. All right, we have, uh, can we have our legal address yeah, that? Just let me, I want you to understand what he's saying, uh, Ms. Ledger. What he's telling you is if she buys the property within 90 days mm -hmm. and she boards up the property, then she can come back over here and ask that the, the condemnation be reversed. But okay. she's got to buy the property first and then come ask them, now I'm the new property owner, I boarded it up, and I'm going to be taking steps to bring this back to a habitable home for the community. Okay. Okay. All I right. think that says it correctly. Perfect. Correct. Let me ask you uh, yes, a Mr. Babin. Question, please. Yes. If she has a documented 
if the sale did not take place, but she has it written down mm -hmm. and signed. I, I'm just, I'm asking mm -hmm. a, a legal document that says that they are going to buy the property. Purchase I mean, that, that would be known as, take it away. that would be purchase known as a, that would be known as a purchase agreement. I do not recommend that you interject a purchase agreement. I think and, the sale needs to be clean. If she buys the property within 90 days and does what you said, comes here and boards it up and puts it so that it at least gives some semblance of a not non dilapidated structure, I think you're on the right track. Yeah, you have some options here. So okay, all right, all right. All right. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second. Can the members please vote your machines? I couldn't think of purchase agreement. <laughs> motion passes. So the next meeting is. Excuse me. April 24th. April 24th. April 24th. So this has to be done by then. Yes, ma'am. Yes. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. No. Not yet. No. 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 Sorry. Sorry. Mr. Jules, can you please press your button? Mr. Jules, can you press your button so I can turn your mic on? Ms. Leger, listen. I explained to you. She has to mic. Okay. Just so you understand, but I want I want her to be able to see me so she can understand. She has 90 days from today to buy your property. Okay. Okay. If she buys your property and then makes an effort to start boarding it up, to give some semblance that it's no longer dilapidated and is going to be a habitable home for the community, the council said they would consider it. She's going to have to come up here after she buys it. Okay. So she she's got 90 days to buy that property. Okay, she's got 90 days to buy it. And Can come here. Come here yes, for the April meeting? Or yes. does she no, not the April meeting, 90 days. 90, 90 days. days. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Mr. Pulaski to give you his card. Okay. And have that lady contact Mr. Pulaski mm -hmm. so so that if something is going down with the purchase, mm -hmm. he can be Mr. Pulaski and Ms. Stewart will be advised they will work with you. In other words, if that sale's going down this lady and everything's accurate what you're saying, uh -huh. they're gonna work with you. Okay. Right. But you okay. got 90 days, it won't be it's condemn they condemning it. Okay. Subject to you doing this transaction within 90 days and that lady taking some steps. To make that house not in the condition it's in. All right. All right. Okay. All right. So Thank you, you so much. You have a great night. All right. Item X, 7139 Grand Caillou Road, owned by Andy Vincent, Andy J. Vincent Jr., and Barney Vincent, co owner, care of. I'm sorry. It's been a long night, guys. Um, Eddie Pilaro, um, Ms. Dion. Yes. Uh, we received the complaint for this location in September of 2020. We've issued notice, conducted inspections. Our last inspection was February 23rd. It continues to be in violation, so we're going to recommend that it's condemned. Is there anyone here representing this property? No. Can make a recommendation? No. No. Did you get notice? Yes, yes, we got notice. Okay, so we have a motion by Mr. Babin. Do you want to speak on this, Mr. No, Babin? No. Okay. And a second um, by Mr. Michel. Uh, members, can we please vote your machines? Motion passes. Item Y, 8404 Main Street, owned by Kenneth Lee Rambert, Jr. Ms. Dion. Okay, we received... I'm sorry, let me... Uh, we received... Received complaint of this location in October 2022, issued notice, um, conducted inspections. We last inspected it on February 23rd. It continues to be in violation. So we're recommending that it's... Um, sorry. Go, go ahead. Okay. okay, yeah. So we're going to recommend that it's condemned. However, we're going to give them 90 days to comply. All right. Mr. Chris Pulaski. Yeah, and I just wanted to point out that the or the property owner has applied for a demolition permit already. They've been in, they have a contractor already contracted for it. They're thinking that it's going to take two to three weeks. That permit, that demolition permit was issued, or sorry, was applied for on the 19th, and the permit application was reviewed today. So it should be issued in the next day or so, but they think it should be two to three weeks, but we're going to give them 90, or recommending that... Uh, they have 90 days to give them Is there power. anyone here representing this property? Yes, ma'am. Kenneth, Kenneth Lee Rimber Jr. I own the property there. All right. And you're at this address, sir? That's correct. Yes, okay. ma'am. 
it right. uh, as you can see it caught in fire <clears throat> excuse me it's been in violation since prior to that but now with the fire it kind of expedited things yes I um, did um I did actually pass today and I I was very pleased to see that yeah, yeah. the the it's, junkyard has been cleared away. Been a lot of work. And yes, and I did see some tractors there as well. Yeah. Um, so I do appreciate the fact that you guys have it done some been, work. Yeah, yes. I, I was trying to do it myself and I was just breaking equipment is all I was doing. So we hired somebody, they have already been paid and they've been uh they've been at it. What I was trying to do was possibly keep maybe the back half, because it's a big house, it's all cypress. We're gonna take it down up to the the back wall and see from there, and then if need be, continue to go ahead and take it all down. Maybe keep the the foundation. Mm -hmm. Perhaps we just gotta wait when we get there and see. But and we have somebody working on it. I have a question. Sure. What are your intent? What's your intent after you clear the house? I might do a rent, make a rental out of it, and get out of there. No more junkyard. No, yeah. Okay, no. all, all right. of that's going to be gone. It's already been taken. Uh, they, they're in the process of moving it all. All right. Now. As soon as I start seeing some more junk, I'm calling Dion's mm -hmm. office, and no we're problem. gonna. All right, but um, yeah. since it is my my area, I'm gonna recommend to the council that um that we condemn it and give him the 60 days to get it done because he said that he's going 90, 90 days to get it done okay yeah yes um but you did say that you're going to work on it and so i'll be passing yeah they already the started very often. they've been there and they, they just brought the dumpster yep. and uh yep uh, we got i think we sent the invoice the paid invoice to the, the no i and i appreciate it it seems like you are in good faith in getting that done so we have a motion by mr fine. babin and a second by mr michelle um uh, chris did you have another comment no Sorry. All right, members, cast your votes. Motion passes. Thank All you, right, Mr. Rimbert. Thanks Rimber. for the consideration. All right. And item Z, 169 uh, Goes Avenue, owned by the estate of Alan Boyne, Louis Boyne Jr., Carolyn Geist, Pearl Duplantis, Charles Savoie III, Patricia Palmer, and Imogen Chauvin, um, care of Patricia Palmer. Uh, Ms. Dion. Okay, we received the complaint for this location in September of 2020. We issued notice, conducted inspections. The last inspection was February 23rd. Um, both the residential and accessory structure continue to be in violation, so we're going to recommend that, it, that they're condemned. Is there anyone here representing this property? Please state your name and address. Good evening, Council. My name is Mitchell Palmer, 235 Normandy Road, Lafayette, Louisiana. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. This is actually in the um, the area that I represent. Um, yes, ma'am. And so it has been in this state for quite some time. So what is your intent with this property? To rehab it, ma'am. To rehab it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I've had uh, Mr. Winter and his crew clean up the yard area twice three times. And uh, I spoke to a roofing contractor. He walked the roof. He said it was pretty strong in Cyprus. And uh, he talked with his nephew, who's a construction guy. Uh, the construction guy said to that I need to have a, hey, I wrote my, my little notes here, for the leveling on the back of the house, you can see. That has to be done first. I thought, I'm not a construction guy. I thought I could just throw paint and do the roof. Well, they're saying you need to do the foundation in the back first. Make sure that's sturdy. I do have a serve pro team going out tomorrow to put a new tarp on it. Do you have any permits for any of this work? No, and that's that was one of the problems. Uh, the reason why I didn't get it is I was told by the roofer that he or his nephew, cousin, whatever he is, would be able to get the the uh, the permit. I got it sent from the li nice ladies at the city, Miss Brown, I believe, the link on online. But I waited. Maybe I shouldn't have waited um, because they kind of handed the ball to the next guy, and I never did get that that building permit, which I do need. And I, I would like to, you know, it's a nice part of town. It's very, it's historic. 
Yeah, it's it's actually in my neighborhood, so oh, yes, I know exactly where it's at. Um, I'm going to recommend to the council that we condemn this, but give you the 90 days to get those permits. And I'd like to see some sort of action being taken here because we are trying to clean up these neighborhoods <coughs> and clean up these communities. Um, and so I'm going to recommend to the council um, that we condemn and give the 90 days like we did the other people uh, who were previous towards you. Can you give me what, uh, like, come back that I have stuff done? And yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you'll just come back to the council um, yes, every time we have another one of these meetings and bring pictures and we'll send people out to do pictures. And uh, yes. as long as you're uh, taking some action and yes, we see some action on this property, we may continue mm -hmm. with that condemnation process how, or continue it, um, it on the condemnation, but we will give you more time. And we have done that in the past. Yes, um, so we just want to see some work on this. Um, yes, and I want to see some work on this because it is actually in my neighborhood. Yes, um, so uh, that's going to be my recommendation. Um, Mr. Bear. Just, just so it's clear, Mr. Palmer, the, the, they are condemning the property. They're giving you 90 days to bring it up to code so that it is habitable and not dilapidated and livable. However, what she's saying is within 90 days, if you apply for the necessary building permits and you begin showing that you are rehabbing this house, you can come back in and ask for them to reconsider their condemnation at that time and show them what you've done. But as of now, the ruling is 90 days and have this structure brought up to, it's condemned and giving you 90 days to bring it up to code to not dilapidated level. I believe Ms. Brown might have told me that over the phone. Okay, so I'm saying what she's trying to explain to you is that if you get your permit and you start doing the work, yes, you can ask her and put it back on and ask the council to extend the combination at that oh, time. Yes. But it is condemned now, so I want yes. you to understand that. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Jules. Mr. Gerald Michel. Yeah, I just want to uh, remind you also that we're having our next condemnation hearing in about 60 days, but you have the 90 days, as they're saying. So if you want to get it put on the agenda to get um, to get more time, you're going to have to contact either Ms. Dion or um, or the council person in that district, which would be Ms. Domingue, to get them to put it on the agenda. It's not going to be automatic, so you have to get it put on the agenda. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Yes, sir. Thank, you. Thank you, sir. So we... Um, do we have a motion? Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Babin and a second by Mr. Gerald Michel. Members, please cast your votes. Have the votes been cast? Motion passes. Um, actually, we have uh, Mr. Uh, Chris Pulaski would like to, to discuss one thing um, with us. It's not, but it's based on this. <laughs> Mr. Pulaski. Okay, so... We're God just over two hours. Yeah, we're good. Yes. On this special meeting. Now, I know we have a lot of derelict and blighted properties in the parish. We had over 300 open uh, files on it, and we've talked about ways to address that in a timely manner. It's our recommendation from the um, administration and staff that what we do is, and April 24th is sort of already locked in which is also the same night as council committee meetings. But what we're recommending is that we keep them on a quarterly basis. But if we hold these special meetings, special council meetings on a night separate and apart from the rest of the committee meetings, we can add a lot more than just 26 to the agenda. Now, hopefully we won't you know, be quite as long, but our point is we can process a lot more in the past that it's been done on this, the special council meetings have been done on the night of committee meetings just as a, uh, to make it easy for everybody. But given the amount of properties that we're going to have and continue to have, it's our recommendation that we look to beginning, say, in the July uh, meetings that we do it on a separate night um, just so we can process more. Mr. Michel. Okay, so what's, um, uh, what's the backlog of, of those that are ready to come to a condemnation hearing uh, that we're unable to do just because we have too many. What's the backlog right now? Uh, it It is the, you know what, I don't have enough. I, I just guess. <laughs> Can you guess? Of the 300, probably more than half of them are ready to come. Okay. Is, yeah. is there any way we can just do this at every at every committee meeting instead of waiting for three until we get caught up? And, uh, and I mean, we could still... Uh, if we choose to give them an extra 90 days, it's not like we have to just say in two weeks, okay? But but is 
you know, that's that's my thought is to try to just do it uh, every two weeks uh, or with every with every set of committee meetings instead of uh, oh, quarterly. I, okay. No. Well, yeah. it's best because of deadlines and documentations that need to be issued and things of that nature. It's best that we keep it quarterly. Yeah. And yeah. there's an extensive amount of public notice requirements yes. and publications in the newspaper. And I think trying to do it every two weeks, I just would hate to see something. You know, get lost in the get, shuffle. Get yeah. yeah, get okay. Get no, I'm good. I just just wanted to bring it up as a possibility. Yeah. Mr. Gidry. Yes, if uh, we we should just come in on a separate night and get this done, because I want to I want to clean this town up. I mean, the parish is looking mm -hmm. deplorable, and we need to do as what we got to do as a council to try to get this parish cleaned up. Uh, I know there's a lot of buildings that we let slide tonight that are in deplorable conditions, and hopefully that these owners can get something done. But I'd make a motion. That I don't know if I can make a motion tonight, but that we 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 I don't know we maybe do seventy five of them on three different occasions or whatever. See if we can catch up. But by that time, you're going to have more of them that's going to come on the condemnations by the time we get it done. So I don't know the number to get done. If she's got one hundred and fifty of them done, let's do a hundred. You know, and come and do it on three different occasions and and get this parish cleaned up. Yeah, one hundred may be a, quite a bit. More than what we were <laughs> looking to do, but the number we were looking to possibly double it at least 50. We want to start there if we can get at least 50 on the agenda and go from there. All right, I have a few more comments. Uh, Mr. Ba yes, yes, sir. It's just a matter of Thank you. All right, Mr. Babin. Uh, yeah, to, to move this forward with, on Chris's recommendation, this is not an agenda item tonight. Which steps do we want to take? Do we want to do an add-on tonight to make this, or do we want to put this on our next meeting as, as a uh, I I just agenda item, or can just Chris do this without having to have a vote of this council? Thank you very much. You just answered my question. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Bavin. <coughs> yeah. Uh, so what we'll do is once we get through the April 24th hearings, because we've already identified that as the next next time we have this special council meeting, uh, when we schedule the following special council meeting, which would, if we stick in on the quarterly basis, that would be in July. But when we do that, we will do it on a night that is not coinciding with the rest of the committee meeting. So it'll be a separate and apart night. So that way we can cover more items. Right. Start at five, you know, five o'clock. We can, we can work with you guys, find out. Of course, we want to have a quorum. So we want to make sure that we, you know, work with everybody here on this council. So we make sure everybody's in attendance. Well, we don't need yeah. to make that decision right now. We have Correct. Yes. All right. Mr. Carl Harding. Yeah, I, I kind of uh, agree with um, Gerald also more frequency. And I, I We've been after being here like two and a half, two hours or so. We have we're given thirty days and ninety days. You know, it's almost like a portfolio. You know, we're given thirty days and ninety days, but it doesn't go along with when we're going to have our hearings. So we extended ourselves, and we actually created another backlog by not actually having them mature at the same time as we are meeting. So with the quality thing, I think we should go uh, in sequence of how we pushing them back because ninety days will be after the, the, the April and before July. You're right. 90 days is usually the norm because we hold them quarterly, but because of the work that was going on in this room, the hearing that we had tonight was originally intended to be at the end of January. So we would have been on that 90 day rotation and we certainly want to get back to that as quickly as we can. Okay. That's right. my point. Thank you. Just so you'll have an idea, you did 26 tonight. So if you, so if you're going to do 50, you better at least have four hours, okay? So what I'm saying is you better start at five and start at five if you want to do 50. All right. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Abert. Mr. Michel. Okay, thank you. And look, I'm for the sake of transparency, um, I mean, this is an open, we have open meetings laws and everything. Uh, the attorney came up and spoke to the chairperson, and I just want to expose what that conversation was. It was a suggestion of possibly considering a, a long Saturday meeting, which is not, not really feasible, and, and that's what was decided. I don't want the public to wonder what it was we were discussing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. Aber. did you have another comment, or did you just press your light? 
Okay. Motion to adjourn. All right. Motion to adjourn. All right. By Mr. Uh, Daniel Babin. Second by Mr. Michel. We are adjourned. That was long. Uh, yeah, I usually use up, uh, my regular uh, uh, dirt side gear. Uh, I think I don't know, I don't ever use that one. <laughs> DJ Gidry. Oh, let me see. All right. No, I'm enough. DJ Gidry. You're going to be the expert because you watch her already. So, all right. So, how we get the mic? Notice to the public, public wishing to address the council, please complete the public wishing to address the council form located on either end of the counter and give it to either uh, the chairperson chair and or the council clerk prior to the beginning of the meeting. I mean, we have order. Uh, all, all comments must be addressed to the council as a whole, addressing individual council members uh, or staff is not allowed. Speakers sh should. Again, notice to the public, if you wish to address the council, please complete the pu public wish to address the council form located on either end of the counter and give it either to the chairman or the council clerk prior to the beginning of the meeting. All comments must be addressed to the council as a whole, addressing individual council members. All staff is not allowed. Speakers should be courteous in their choice of words and actions and comments should be limited to uh, the issues and cannot involve individual or staff related matters. Also, all cell phones and electrical devices used for communication should be silenced for the duration of the meeting. Uh, the meeting will of uh, the uh, I will now call uh, to order the Public Service Committee meeting. I will give the invocation and the pledge. Heavenly Father, as we have labored here on Radio God, we ask that uh, our health and our strength, our minds may be uh, closely associated as one of God, that we may go forward uh, and, and take care of the affairs of this uh, community, O oh God. We ask you to bless us in your darling son, Jesus' name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yes, Mr. Hampton. Yeah, roll call, I guess we can press it in. Yes, sir. Mr. Amade? Yeah. Mrs. Domain? Yeah. Mr. Darren Guidry? Mr. Babin? Yeah. Mr. Dirk Idry? Yep. Mr. Trosclair? Yeah. Mr. Tillman? Here. Mr. Harding? Here. Mr. Michel? Present. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum present. Thank you very much, sir. <clears throat>
Item number one, resolution authorizing Turbo and Parish Consolidated Government uh, to prepare and uh, submit a pre-application for a statewide flood control program for assistance in implementing uh, implementation of the Bayou Lacob location uh, C pump station project for the purpose of in reducing existing flood damages, providing for the necessary documentations of said flood damage, and provide for other related matters in connection with therewith. Move. Move, moved by Mr. Uh, <coughs> uh, Amadi. Second. Second by Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Babin. Mr. Babin. Uh, members vote your machine. Has uh, everyone You're voted? To vote too, Mr. I, I'm allowed to vote too. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have everyone voted, Mr. Uh, Hampton? Uh, has the motion? Uh, the motion has passed. Uh, item number two. Bear with me too. Authorizing uh, uh, the execution of a change order number one to. Uh, the construction agreement of parish project number 22-BLDG-41 Animal Shelter Storage Building, Turbo and Parish, Louisiana. Second. Moved by Mr. Uh, Gedry, second by uh, Mr. Well, moved by Mr. Darren Gedry, second by Mr. Dave Gedry. Um, uh, vote your machine. Uh, has all votes been cast? Uh, and the motion passes. Item number three. Uh, resolution to provide an approval of the uh, of amendment number seven uh, to the engineering agreement for the parish project number 17-DRA-42 uh, by your turbine drainage improvement project, Turbine Parish, Louisiana. So moved. moved by uh, Mr. John uh, Amadi, second by uh, Mr. Uh, Darren Gidry, members of Vote Your Machine. <coughs> Have you, uh, uh, has all votes been cast? Uh, we have 16 votes here. Uh, all votes have been cast, but has been proved. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it showed up on the machine. Uh, working out the kinks. Okay, item number uh, four. Resolution providing an, uh, approval of the uh, amendment number one to the engineering agreement for the parish project 22-park-21 Rotary Centennial uh, Plaza Project, Turbine Parish, Louisiana. So moved. moved by Mr. Uh, um, Alvin Tillman, second by Mr. Dirk Guidry. Uh, members vote your machine. So all votes been cast. Motion carries. Item number, item number five, resolution authorizing the execution of exchange order number one for a construction agreement uh, for parish project uh, 20 dash road 54 pa uh, pavement marking project uh, phase one turbine parish Louisiana. Moved by Mr. Uh, uh, Tillman, second by Mr. Babin. Uh, members cast your vote. Has all of those been cast? Mm -hmm. Motion carries. <laughs> Item number six, resolution authorizing parish president, uh, parish president to execute an assignment on behalf of Turbine Parish Consolidated Government as uh, in, in, intervener authorizing Houston J. Leeret to ass assign to Gross Flourish Poultry Positary LLC certain agreement for press professional service necessary for the Office uh, of Workers Compensation Government Tower Project and Head Start HVAC Renovation Project. So moved. moved by Mr. Doyle Gidry, second by second. Uh, Mr. Amadi. Uh, Member Scott, your vote. <clears throat> Has all votes been cast? That's all the votes been cast. Right. Motion carried. Sure oh, 
Yeah. It's showing nine. It's showing nine. It says. Things have been showing up kind of weird. Yeah. 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 Mm, right. That's why I'm showing eight all the time. Mm. Yeah. Right. Okay. Item number seven. Uh, resolution authorizing, uh, awarding an authorization, the signing of the construction contract parish project number 22-LOCK-49 uh, by your turbine lock <coughs> emergency repair project, Turbone Parish, Consolidated Government, Turbone Parish, Louisiana, and authorizing its insurance uh, issuance of the notice to proceed. Second. Moved by Mr. Um, Michelle, second by Mr. Derek Guidry. Uh, members, cast your vote. Clerk, has uh, everyone cast their votes? Uh, motion carries. So we're on item number eight. Item number eight, uh, giving notice to intent to adopt an ordinance to amend the zoning map of, of, of the parish of Turbone as, so as to rezone from R1 single family residence to R3 multifamily resident lot 19 block C, Mechanicville 139A Banks Avenue, home of Turbone, Louisiana, Wilford Nails applicant and calling for a public hearing on said a matter on Wednesday, April 12, 2023, so moved, at 6.30 right. p.m. A move by Mr. Uh, uh, Tillman, second by Mr. Dirk Guidry. Our members cast your vote. <coughs> Clerk, have everyone cast their vote? Okay. Motion carried. Motion to adjourn. Uh, members cast your vote. <laughs> <laughs> Motion by Mr. Uh, Mr. Um, Tillman, second by Mr. Doug Guidry. Cash your vote. Someone, and look, it's kind of distracting yeah. when you're used to it. Uh, but, but I think also what should happen. Yeah. Yeah, but I, the other thing about it. Your vote is being shown, whoever is not in that chair, which is not right, you. It's, being, it's not be. being shown up there. That's the one. It's yeah, not well, the vacant there, chair. There are definitely some glitches. And yeah. so Keith and I are, well, we'll yeah. kind of, you know. Well, just for general you purposes, the people, are, it is a nine to nothing vote. It's only showing eight up there. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's showing four absent, too. But then those, we're not in the meeting right now. Kevin, you're still y'all. No. no Ordinance not. says roll call vote. Yeah, roll call. Okay. Yeah. Roll call vote. Not voice. I know, but we, I think it should be signified as passed. Can you give me the. Well, I think, yeah. well he's saying that. He's saying the motion passed. Yeah. I think it's. I think yeah, the legislature wants to be a voice. Roll call voice. Do I? Like the roll call vote. The ordinance, the ordinance says, says, says roll call vote. It doesn't matter. This is how we're doing it. The, uh, and he is saying whether it passed or not. But uh, what I'd like to hear him say is that it was unanimous. You don't have okay. to get the vote. Well, I mean, I think we, we never did before. Until, until we get the glitches out, okay? We never did before. Only because it's you know, visible you know, to the public, I think we ought to do it. I think, you know, John, they did bring all these in here and say that they uh, show one distinction, one person, they did say it was not unanimous. Okay, yeah. let's work this out after tonight. Yeah, yeah. Notice to the public, if you wish to address the council, please complete the public wish to address the council form located on either end of the counter. Give it to either the chairman or the council clerk prior to the beginning of the meeting. All comments must be addressed to the council as a whole. Addressing individual council members or staff is not allowed. Speakers should be courteous in their choice of words and actions and comments shall be limited to the issue and cannot involve individuals or staff-related matters. All cell phone and electronic devices used for communication should be silenced for the duration of the meeting. I'd like to call the Budget and Finance Committee meeting of February 27, 23rd, 23 to order, and I'll have an invocation by Mr. and a pledge by Mr. Tillman. 
please rise. Dear Father, we ask at this time that you would lead and guide, direct our thoughts, our hearts, and our minds, that the things that we'll do here today will be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Trost, class, thank you for moving the flag for us. Can I have a roll call, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Amade? Yeah. Mrs. Domain? Yeah. Mr. Darren Guidry? Yeah. Mr. Babin? Yeah. Mr. Dirk Guidry? Mm -hmm. Mr. Trostclair? Yeah. Mr. Tillman? Yeah. Mr. Harding? Yeah. Mr. Michel? Yeah. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum present. Thank you, Keith. Item one, resolution authorizing entering into a con cooperative endeavor agreement with South Central Louisiana Human Services Authority and authorizing the parish president to sign said agreement. I got a move by Mr. Tillman, second by Mr. Carly Harding. Vote your machines. Clerk, have you all the votes been counted? Look on your machine right there. Yes, they have. Votes nine to zero. Motion passes. Mm -hmm. Item two, authorizing enter to a co cooperative endeavor agreement with Southeast Louisiana Legal Services and authorizing the parish president to sign said agreement. Oh. Moved by Mr. Tillman. Second. Second by Mr. Babin. Uh, members, vote on your machines. Have all the votes been cast? Yes, they have. The vote is nine to zero. Item three, concurrent with parish administration to approve the state contract purchase of three trucks for the planning and zoning department, home of fire department, and pollution control Division of Southland Dodge Incorporated. Moved by Mr. Tillman, second by Mr. Darren Guidry. Council members, place your vote. All the votes have been accounted for. The vote is nine to zero. Item four, to award contract and authorize the parish president or administration to execute on behalf of the Terrebonne Parish Consolidated Government an agreement for professional services with Technical Environmental Services Incorporated to provide for asbestos, mold, and lead assessments and abatement for parish-owned facilities damaged by Hurricane Ida. Move by Mr. Babin, second by Ms. Domang. Council members, cast your vote. I have a light. Mr. Michel. Thank you. Is there a reason why it says our administration? Um, why, why wouldn't it just be the parish president like everything else we do? Ms. Candace, would you like to answer that question? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Michel, this was just recommendation of administration. We do have um, the capability sometimes of parish manager signing. We just don't want it to get confused. That's why we put it um, parish president or administration in there. I've, I've never seen that on there before. Is that um, all, Mr. Michel? Sir? Is that all? Yeah, I'd like to offer a substitute motion leaving off our administration. Mr. Ebert? Yes, the parish president has designated the parish ma manager to sign on his behalf. It's a recorded document. It's authorized. It's legal. And so he did, that's why they're putting it like that, Gerald. It's legal. Well, it's that legal. being said, I mean, it would be legal without those words on well, it. Well, it, what I'm saying, it is, but it doesn't make it. It's innocuous, okay? I mean, it's, it's what it, it, it really makes no difference. Yeah. I, I, I mean, there's no need for a substitute motion on this. Okay. Are oh, you finished, Mr. Michel? Uh, yeah, I'm finished. This is ridiculous, though. All right, Mc council members, cast your vote. I have a uh, vote is nine to zero. Motion passes. Item five, introduce an ordinance to declare a surplus, a tax property located at 300 Willowdale Drive, adjudicated to the Terrible Parish Consolidated Government, and to acquire authorization to dispose of said property in accordance with LARS 47 semicolon 2196 and call a public hearing on said matter on Wednesday, March 15, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. Move. Moved by Mr. Michel, second by Mr. Amadi. Council members, cast your vote. Oh, excuse me? Oh, uh, Mr. Harding, I'm sorry. Second the motion. Council members, cast your vote. 
No, vote is nine to zero, motion carries. Motion to adjourn, Mr. Amadi. Second, Mr. Michel, all in favor? I mean, cast your votes. Well, I'm looking for the lights. See if somebody got a light to display. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's what I'm doing, yeah. Instead of having to ask the clerk, you got it right here. Yeah, you don't have to ask all that, you know. Yeah, yeah. right, yeah. Read your numbers on here, and you don't have to ask him. It and the reason why I keep showing four absent is because we have 13 monitors up here. Right, yeah, yeah. I'm just looking right here. Okay. Uh, notice to the public, if you wish to address the council, please complete the public wishing to address the council form located at either end of the counter and give it to the chairman or the council clerk prior to the beginning of each meeting of the meeting. All comments must be addressed to the council as a whole, collectively. Addressing individual council members and staff is not allowed. Speakers should be courteous in their choice of words and actions, and comments should be limited to the issue and cannot involve individuals or staff-related matters. Thank you. All cell phones and electronic devices used for communication should be silenced through the duration of the meeting. I'd like to call the meeting of the Policy Procedure Legal Committee of Chairman Parish Council to order, and I'd like to uh, uh, please rise for an invocation and a pledge. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many gifts we have in this parish. Uh, we please watch over us as we consider the matters at hand in, in government and help us to do your will in each decision that we make. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Keith, can we have a roll call, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Amade? Ms. Doming? Mr. Darren Guidry? Mr. Babin? Mr. Dirk Guidry? Mr. Trosclair? Mr. Tillman? Mr. Harding? Mr. Michel? Present. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum present. Thank you, sir. Item number one, approve the co-sponsorship co request from the American Cancer Society Incorporated for the Lip Sync Terrebonne event to be held March 31st, 2023 from 6 to 10 p.m. The Home Municipal Auditorium moved by Councilman uh, Tillman, seconded by Councilwoman Domang. Any discussion? Please vote. Okay, everyone has voted. It is nine to zero. Motion passes. Item two, approve the co-sponsorship request for the Louisiana Department of Health Region 3 for the Mental Health Awareness Expo to be held May 16th, 2023 from nine to one at the Barry P. Bonvalent Civic Center. Moved by Mr. Tillman, seconded by Ms. Domain. Uh, any discussion? Please vote your machines. So nine affirmatives, motion passes. Item three, approve the co-sponsorship request from Friends of the Terrible Animal Shelter for annual Friends of the Terrible Animal Shelter 5K9 run walk to be held March 4th, 2023 from 8 to 12 at the South Louisiana Wetlands Discovery Second. Pavilion. Second. Moved by Mr. Tillman, seconded by Mr. Dirk Guidry. Any discussion? Please vote your machines. Showing nine affirmatives, motion passes. Item four, approve the co-sponsorship request from Keep Terrible and Beautiful for the Pirates and Boots Festival to be held on Saturday, April 22nd, 2023 from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the home of Downtown Marina. Move. Moved by Mr. Uh, Dirk Gidger, seconded by Ms. Domang. Any discussion? Please vote your machines. I'm not showing a vote for Mr. Tillman. Let's, let's do it. Do it again. Do it again. Um, I need to vote again. Is that what you're asking? Yes, please vote, okay. Mr. Babin. Okay. 
Do it again. Everybody vote again, please. Clear them all. Okay, showing nine votes. Um, motion passes. Item five, approve the co-sponsorship request for the Sarah event and the candlelight vigil to be held May 6, 2023 from 3 to 8 p.m. at the Courthouse Square. M uh, moved by Ms. Domang, seconded by Mr. Dirk Mr. Dirk Guidry. Um, any discussion? Please vote your machines. Showing nine yeas, a uh, motion passes. Item six, accept, accepting the recommendation of administration and risk management department to accept <coughs> approximate annual cost to ensure team sports premiums effective 2023 to 2024. Second. Moved by Mr. Trostclair, seconded by uh, Ms. Domang. Any discussion? Please vote your machines. Showing nine affirmative. Motion passes. Item seven, accepting the recommendation of administration and the risk management department to accept the attached schedule of property insurance, equipment floater, and special equipment floater premiums effective March 1st, 2023 to March 1st, 2024. Moved by Mr. Trostclair, seconded by Mr. Darren Guidry. Any discussion? Please vote your machines. Showing nine yeas, motion passes. Item eight, resolution, accepting the recommendation of administration and the risk management department to accept the attached proposal for boiler and machinery equipment breakdown premium. It's effective March 1st, 2023 to March 1st, 2024. Moved by Mr. Dirk Guidry, seconded by Mr. Trostclair. Any discussion? Please vote your machines. <laughs> Mr. Amity, did you want to vote? I was voting yay. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so uh, showing nine yays, motion passes. Item nine, resolution concurring with the resolution ordering and calling a special election to be held in the Recreation District Number 8 in the Parish of Terrebonne, State of Louisiana, to authorize the levy of a special tax therein, making application to the State Bond Commission in connection therewith and providing for other ma uh, matters in connection therewith. Second. Moved by Mr. Carl Harding, seconded by Mr. Darren Guidry. Any discussion? Please vote your machines. Showing nine yay votes, motion passes, and I'd like to say that that is a renewal. Uh, motion is adjourned by Mr. Tillman. Second. Second by Mr. Amity. All in favor? Aye. We're adjourned.